Hello, hello. Everyone. Wow. That was exciting. I got pumped by that music. That was good right there. Yeah. That was a real party jammer. It really pumped me up. Very pumped <laughs> And with the delay, that's really to good too, the echo. Of course. Yeah. Um, uh, well, hello, everyone. How's hey, buddy. Uh, Hi. Nice. <laughs> Hello. I feel like these things are always the start of them is, is always kind of awkward. But it's just hard because nobody knows awkward. how to who to talk. I was going to introduce, and I don't want to do that because it's not my channel. So you start. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. We are here with Modern Day James, Stephen Zapata, Cynics, and Marshall Landruff. Uh, James is going to be animating today. Hell yeah! We can talk about art and stuff. <laughs> we what can art. only hope that we talk about art. Yeah. We'll talk about art. Now, are you going to field questions, Christian? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I will be both fielding questions from the community and also just, uh, I guess, asking questions from us to James. Cool. Hey. But it's James' show as far as he's going to be the guy making art. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why this keeps happening. Um, it's Because <laughs> you're willing. Yeah. It's also because you're You your know what? Moves? I had to promote this class, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, do you want to talk about the thing you're trying to promote? To start? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I just want to build the tension and not talk about it at all and just sit here. Oh, yeah. And just sit here awkwardly and stare at you guys. Um, no, I want to, I'll talk about it. Um, if we could share my screen. Uh, yeah. So I'm doing an animation basics course over at um, Project TV. Uh, that's the, the website hosted by Rad Seacrest. It's pretty cool. And it's just going to be super basic stuff, just going into like, um, I mean, you can see the lesson plan there. It's like bouncing ball, um, cloth, um, character run cycles, all like the, the sort of early stuff. Uh, and it's eight weeks. Um, the, the review part is getting filled up. I think there's only one or two left. So, uh, but the, whatchamacallit, you can watch it back. Uh, there's unlimited versions of those. So. Um, yeah, I'll post the link in the, the chat and you guys can sign up for that if you want. Nice. And yeah, it should be really fun. Is what you're working on today have anything to do with that? Is it part of? Not exactly. So here's some animation stuff that I just did this week um, that I was just working on showing um, like how you, how much you could do with a simple loop and just like uh, using some camera panning. And um, really this for me was just like a test of compositing and seeing how much it could get done with uh, I think this is only seven or eight drawings. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it came out pretty solid. Yeah. Um, nice. cool. But what I'm working on today, um, I have a few things that's going on. Uh, we got some really rough animation here, just some intense run cycle stuff. And then, let's. So the character that I have going here is um, actually one of med students, Ryan Pallet, designed it. Oops. And he's got this like weird demon arm thing. So I uh, thought it would be interesting to do a scene where he had his arm transform. So I was working on that beforehand. Um, but I don't know exactly if I want to work on this on stream. So that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out. I might do just some some simple stuff. Like, yeah, uh, totally yeah. fine. It's, cool. it's exciting to see, though, the rough, the rough stuff is so rough that a person who didn't know anything about animation would say, oh, I don't like it. It doesn't look like yeah. a, a real thing. But it's it's so rough that a person who knows anything or cares anything about the process of animating knows that that's where all of the personality starts to come to birth. Yeah, it starts there. I'm, let me see if I have... Um, on the I don't other know. One. I don't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Robert. I'm well, glad you're here to... I'm uh, I, 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 love, I love the early stages. I mean, if stuff. you make Robert happy, you know it's good. Yeah. See if I have any rough passes in here. Now I'm just delaying from having to do any drawing, but well, the longer you can postpone it, the greater tension you create, which means that when I'm it trying. actually happens, there is a sense of wow, this was better than I expected. <laughs> um, yeah, yesterday, what did I do? I was doing some studies from uh, the actor Toshira Mufune, and just wow. small little bits of, of animation. I'm not gonna nice little that. movement from Seven Samurai here, yeah, yeah. I recognize this scene. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll do, um, I was thinking I was going to do just like a baseball swing, something kind of simple, but maybe play up the perspective so it's a little bit more intense. How much will you use a reference of a person swinging a bat? 
Um, like how much reference will I use in doing it? Um, yeah. I'll do it for the key poses, uh, but then I'm going to end up um, really dramatically shifting it. So I'll try to take the key poses and exaggerate um, either via perspective or how much um, pushing the the twisting in the body. How about the position of the camera? Will you change oh, that? Oh, that I'm going to change. I'm just looking at um, the video I'm pulling up is going to be in side view. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking it might even be fun to like track the ball as it's being pitched towards the baseball player and then have like a fisheye lens of him hitting it. Mm -hmm. um, I do have to find where I put that video though. So that's the next part. Oh yeah. So, so I've got just a slowed down version of somebody hitting a uh, baseball. So I'm going to have essentially all the key frames in there. Uh, we'll do it pose to pose. So, um, you know, when you animate straight ahead, you're just going each frame. That's each um, sequential frame. But we're going to go hit like the major key poses and then sort of interpolate between those. Wow. What a great shot, too, to see it in slow motion and to see the way he shifts his weight. He's got a really good swing, I think. I don't know anything about baseball, but. <laughs> yeah, you don't really it need to know good, anything though. about baseball to know that it looks good, though. It's just seeing somebody work something like that in slow motion where you see every nuance of it is fascinating. It certainly is. Are all you right, now big, I, I'm uh, going to rely on you guys. Guy, oh, sorry. What's up? I said, are you a big impact frame guy? Do you like to add in a bunch of impact frames? Yes. I love impact frames. They're the best. <laughs> now, tell me what an impact frame is. You mean when he hits the ball? Basically, you, yeah, taking, usually shifting the actual, like adding a frame that's just meant to create a sense of impact. So usually in a lot of animation, it's like an inverted frame, like it'll be all black and you'll just have like a little bit of white, like where the action is to like uh -huh. accentuate this feeling of uh, just focus and impact. So like okay. if someone hits a ball, usually it'll like there'll be one frame and you barely notice it where it's like all black. And then like maybe right where the ball is being hit, you'll see like a little like a little energy piece of white right there to really just center your focus. And also just like create this. It, it creates a strong feeling of just like oof, like impact when you see it in motion. Have you ever uh, looked at frame by frame at some of the. Uh the 1940s Warner Brothers cartoons to see how grotesque some of the positions <laughs> get. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Where somebody, yeah, hits, yeah. somebody hits and it just, it comp and you never noticed it when you were watching it because there's only one frame, but it was enough to give a jolt. It's, it's awesome when you, yeah, when you go frame by frame and you just see how dramatic they, they stretch these things out. You ever seen the mad, comic from the 1950s that Jack Davis illustrated on slow motion and how they they showed how in slow motion you can see more and they does this sound familiar to any of you no it doesn't sound familiar okay to me. you guys talk I'm gonna see if I can find it okay, okay. Right. let me let me actually do a uh, I feel like some people in chat were asking. let me let me give us a nice good solid intro I don't think we did a good enough intro on everyone Okay. Take it away, uh, Robert. So, Take it uh, away. in this call today, we got uh, we got Christian off off on the off, off on the side over there. Christian, of course, uh, works for Proco. He's kind of helping run things today. But if you don't know Christian, he also does a lovely podcast uh, called know, the Overthinker Society. I think all I think all of us has been on it, right? Uh, on the Overthinker so? Society, I believe James, have you been on it? Yeah, you've been on it. Uh, right. I think everyone has been on it, but I think. Wait, uh, what did I call it? I called oh, it. Oh my god, my That's brain is. Uh, it, it's called the Sketchy Van Podcast. I was going to say I didn't know if he changed the name or not. Topics. No, no. And really, just getting into crazy stuff. Yeah. Um. So, that's exciting. Uh, we also have Steven Zapata here, who is also someone that likes to overthink things and really get in deep on everything. Uh, you might know him from his YouTube channel, which is great, where he likes to pontificates on uh, all kinds of deep topics a lot of a lot of stuff about uh i don't know people people are talking about god in the chat a lot when they're referencing you um so okay, uh, okay. that's also no, you really showed your cards there robert all right Dude. Words. <laughs> well there's I, I hear i hear everyone in the chat being like i wonder what steven's doing it looks like he's thinking about god <laughs> 
90 so. percent of the time that'd be true so that sounds okay. about right and of course the modern day james is drawing for us but also wonderful wonderful channel kind of going all over the place you've really focused on animation lately yeah that's all i'm going to be doing from from now on i've decided oh um, really you, that this is a full-on uh commitment to just animation being your main kind of that's, uh that's it outlet. that's the main thing okay Forever you, and you, ever. you went really far into the concept art world and the design world. And it was a mistake. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't feel know. like it was a mistake. No, no, I'm just being obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, but he is looking. Uh, can we all just say how adorable he looks oh, today? I mean, without the, the beard, the curly hair, rosy cheeks. Uh, I think the adorable know, the, is at a 10 right now. Yeah. Thank you. The yeah, it fair, is a little bit warm in my studio fair. room, and that pose is looking like crap. He's a, he's, he just looks Does your mom like you better without a beard, James? Uh, you know, I believe so. I believe yeah. so. All moms, moms do, it do. seems. I pointedly try to not take my mother's advice on my appearance. It's yeah. wise. There are only two of us without facial hair in the stream. Hmm. Hmm. What does that say? It says everything. I don't know. Hey, do, are people yeah. making comments on this as we go? Is there a way to see that there's a yes. com comment stream? There I is a it. there is a chat on YouTube on okay. the YouTube. So if I, I go to YouTube, it up. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, let me keep going. So I'm uh, I'm Cynix. I do also YouTube stuff. Uh, really, just like design theory. That's my thing. Good. I just like talking about design stuff. And honestly, I think everyone here likes talking about just the deeper side of art. Uh, but then, of course, over to the side over here on the other side, we have Marshall, just a classic, wonderful art teacher, um, everyone's favorite art teacher. Uh, oh, so happy 420 to Marshall over there. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> happy happy uh, April 20th or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Play coy. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, Marshall is, I think everyone's, one of everyone's favorite people to talk to about any just art stuff. So. Hey, well, I found something interesting to try to fulfill the, uh, the, uh, earlier issue of slow motion. Can I share screen right now, John? Yeah, yeah go for it. Okay. I am trying to share screen, but I might be showing you guys now. Is it, are you seeing a Jack Davis image? Yes. Uh, yes. But if okay. you want to transfer that over to the the main screen, uh, or not not you, I don't know if the on the Proco side of things if they can do. Yeah, there we go. Okay, but you can see a guy who's diving, right? Yep. Yeah. And and so it shows that you can when when he goes in slow motion, you can see it all. And then the final frames are this. I believe that we might be covering all of the other. We're frames. covering the final frame. They can't see. Okay. Well, this was one of those awkward yeah, moments of here, now here's the fixed. punchline. Okay. I can see. Nice. Yeah. yeah I, I remember when I was a kid and I was reading these, I remember when it got to this point, I thought, wow, I, I wasn't even looking ahead for some reason. It <laughs> might've been page at a time. I, I don't remember, but I remember thinking that's pretty serious. So anyway, there it was. <laughs> All of that work so that you could see Jack Davis. Oh, I didn't credit this. This was written by Harvey Kurtz. Yeah, written by Harvey Kurtzman, drawn by Jack Davis, like in the early 1950s. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing yeah. screen. That might have been anticlimactic, <laughs> considering how much I no, amped it up. No, no, it's all good. That's the magic of animation and time being stretched out, right? I think we can yes. all appreciate that. As the as the non animator here, the one who's done it truly, never, not once, uh, never I, done I, it? I can appreciate the magic of it. Um, I'm going to do a quick study of the the just straight up side view, by the way, and then I'll go into uh, more crazy perspective. Yeah. Well, when, when I talk to a bunch of illustrators, everyone says that animating is one of the better ways to learn how to draw because you're constantly trying. You're drawing so many different poses all at once. As a non-animator, I'd say that that sounds self-serving and inaccurate. <laughs> I never <laughs> animated, so it, it does seem kind of biased. But it's the as only thing to do. In both, I would definitely agree because yeah. no matter you can't, you know, basically rely on your safety comfort zone of poses and things to animate. You need to just constantly be drawing things that you've never drawn in angles and positions that you would have never 
probably thought to draw of before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the flow of it seems, seems like an important aspect of, of animating, um, but how everything fits together piece by piece. Yeah. All Don't I know worry, about animation is that James is quite good at it. That James is very good at it. Keep saying that over and over again. I well, could fill even, three hours with that. Even if you weren't good, just watching you with the commitment that you've got to it, that you throw yourself into it with such, I'm going to figure out how to do this. I'm going to figure out how to do this. I'm going to figure out how to do this. There's a sense of picking up your uh, <laughs> your childlike enthusiasm for it. And then you do end up with good product. I'm definitely super excited about it. Um, I think for me, part of it is like, uh, I just, I don't, I like the idea of, having something like when I was designing characters, which I don't think I'm very good at, but uh, when I was doing that, I felt like if I wasn't working on a project, it, it was kind of like I was designing characters that really weren't going towards anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also noticed that um, sort of when I'm like sitting around and just daydreaming about stuff, I tended to think more in like a cinematic lens. Um, again, not not saying it's good or bad. I just think that was the way my brain seemed more inclined to work. So I was like, I might as well just follow that a bit. Plus it gives me some excuse to combine music and the art. When yeah. you say a cinematic lens, you mean for one thing, a horizontal uh, frame, like a movie? Yeah, just, yeah, also like if I'm sort of daydreaming, I'm not thinking about like cool ass character designs and, and that sort of thing. Like some people, uh, like my friend Ryan, uh, the way, like when he's daydreaming, he's coming up with cool, crazy characters. You know, he's always inventing worlds and that sort of thing. Um, whereas I kind of feel more inclined to work within pre-existing uh, he's maybe or or that kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's a director's. Uh, yeah, that's a storyboarders, directors, visual storytellers, sequential. Gift Don Richardson, who was a TV director, uh, didn't drive, and uh, he said that one of the reasons why is that he was always spending all of his time imagining shots, and that one time when he did drive and he ran into I can't remember what he ran into and it splayed out all over his front windshield and he said the first thought that came to his <laughs> mind was what a great shot it was. <laughs> Gross. It is interesting, though, to, to well, not just forget interesting. I think it's kind of essential for artists of all kinds to realize how their ideas come to them. Because I think that as a, a bit of our internality, as like the ground floor of how we actually, you know, this may sound gross, but uh, interact with ourselves, um, the, way that, the way that our ideas show up at first blush, I think that that actually does betray a lot about who we are as creatives. And it can be so primordial that in my experience, it's easily covered up then by like, oh, well, it can't be that. And it's got to fit with this industry. It's got to be more like this or something like that. And you can sort of trick yourself into thinking that you have different sorts of ideas. But at least for me, I know, um, you know, my ideas are flexible, you know, I can turn them into designs, I can turn them into cinematic thinking, I can turn them into words and things like that. But they, they tend to actually only show up in a couple of forms. And at least personally, I have found that going back to those initial forms over and over again has been really helpful for my career. Like, uh, and those two forms are obviously there's the really developed pencil drawings you do. What's is the other yeah. stuff your sketchbook stuff? Well, I think so. I think the first one is the pencil drawing stuff, which the way that those ideas come to me is the way James might see things almost like a movie is happening or something like that. I just experience a form in my mind, some sort of weird tactile sensation of this pressing into that, this bending against Whoa. this, this turning towards the light, this turning away from the light. Um, just that, just a form impression, that's number one. And then, you know, my pencil drawings are really just a, an extrapolation of trying to find a way to present that and oftentimes to contextualize that because the form that presents itself is often abstract. And then I spend a lot of time thinking like, yeah, but I could kind of make 
a back or a deltoid look like that and then I can turn that into a full drawing. But yeah, the, the initial experience for me is definitely a pretty abstract form impression that for some reason I experience emotionally. You know, it, it gets me excited. I'm like, yeah, 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 we got to do something with that. And then the other one is I think like a lot of people experience and I think artists can discount it a lot of the times is um, a lot of my ideas come as linguistic formations, just discursive word thoughts. Um, and I used to discount those out of hand because for a long time I was like, well, I'm an artist, it's only visual things. And then a big part of my development and my career was being like, no, I'm, I'm the words too, I'm those things too. And then onboarding those and mixing them with the art. And really everything else is really just a variation or a blending of those two things. And I very rarely have ideas present themselves outside of those two basic uh, modes. Well, that explains a good deal, Stephen. One thing it explains is that your, uh, your, your grotesque sort of body part stuff that is floating. Oh, well, let's not is, get it, 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 No, no, that's a compliment. That's not, it, I'm into it. It's stuff that comes to you as, as something you don't know what it is. And when you said you, you contextualize it, that's where you look at it and say, okay, it's this bizarre looking thing, but it could be something else. You also mm. did. You did a couple of, of uh, I, you did a couple that really reminded me of William Blake's work. I don't know if you know William Blake's work. Oh, thank you. It, Huge compliment. It, thank you. But the, the symmetrical, you had one, so, was there something to do with days or, or talent, days of talent or something like that? Does that sound familiar? Uh, I, I definitely have done quite a few symmetrical yeah. ones. Um, you, you've got one where there's four of them like a clock. Oh, yeah. Man at a Crossroads. That's the one you're Man at a of. Crossroads. And then yeah. you have another one where there's one figure in the center who's vertical. In fact, let me just find them. Can I find them? And, sure. and that way, I, I know I've got them on here. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those are, uh, those look to me like things that the image, something came to you like in a dream. It does not look like somebody assigned a, uh, a story problem. And you mm -hmm. said, good, let's work this out like a production designer. It yeah. looked like it was something that haunts you in a dream that comes to you in a in a, a flash and then you develop it. And then like when you said contextualize it, try to find some way to justify it for for subject matter that can be named or that can be linked to something else. Yeah. Yeah. Marshall, remind me if I ever publish an art book to have you write the forward. That's oh, okay. like a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. Just going to be calling your body parts grotesque. I'm good with that. It was, well, they it, are. They are. are they, you, you, you I, I think the grotesque. joke, Marshall, was that you were calling his actual body. There's grotesque. no joke. You <laughs> are your grotesque body. Yeah. You, you guys haven't seen my feet, so don't, oh, don't, true, don't true, speak true. too quickly. It's just reality. Yeah. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, gosh. I've got, uh, there, there's, there's four pieces that I've got here that, uh, that you did. Um, let me share screen. Gosh, I have to uh, hang on. I'm sorry that I'm so tech challenge but i'm going to do it that's okay that's all right this is this is our moment uh looking at what stephen was talking about process uh, i would like to talk about what he was referring to look at that piece can you see it oh yeah that it's incredible yeah what a powerful piece man just that that composition as as you know, so centered and, and symmetrical. And I remember when I was an art history student, uh, our art history, I was like 19, our art history teacher explained, more than one teacher explained this, that symmetry is boring. And that's why artists avoid it. And so from the age of 19 on, I avoided symmetry mm -hmm. uh, entirely so that I would never be boring. But then I started to realize symmetry is predictable but if if you do stuff that's so interesting within it and then this one also really did a lot for me this is man at a crossroads is that what you called it yes yeah the uh i i think we're looking at the same but the previous is the top piece of that the full the full piece is um oh, okay. is sort of all four figures rotating oh okay shape. yeah this yes. is the this is okay so all these all four of these are separate figures yes but yeah. then here they are where there's four different. Okay, great. Let me put and, a, I can put a, I'm going to put a link to my website in the YouTube chat in case right. anybody wants to just look at yeah. the, uh, uh, 
the the images straight up. Yeah, Stephen, I feel like uh, uh, if I had seen your work when I was a student, if I had seen your work when I was younger, I feel like my work would have been much better because for one thing, you're controlling your values. Uh, as much as you put in there, you're, you've got a control of your values for composition that I never had. This I love because it, it <laughs> You've got just enough radiation coming out of here to make it so that he just is the central figure. But then you also gave a lot of attention. You have spotlights all around the place, but the one central spotlight is, is so powerful. Thank you, Marshall. I, I'm going to stop sharing. I, I have to say, uh, uh, my, my younger self at the beginning of college who uh, spent uh, a not inconsiderable amount of time excavating your website would have been uh, quite mortified to imagine that I would be receiving an art review like that from Marshall. At Ex excavating my website? What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Like I dug through every page of it, every sublink, went to every book, bought most of Did them, read really? them all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you mean that, that, that sketchbook stuff too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went through all of it. Yeah. 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 And all, all your recommended books were extremely useful to me. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think being a poor art student back then, the only thing I didn't do was buy the, um, the videos that you did have available back then. Like, I think your, I think your perspective course was available at that, at that time, but this was when I was taking a perspective class. So I was like, maybe I don't need to double up uh, right now, but I, yeah, I read, I read through all of that. Well, uh, that's quite a compliment. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank I, you I, for the kind I want to get back to some of the other things you said, though. If you guys don't mind, another couple minutes on this. Yeah, We're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. images coming to you almost like dreams, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then and, and contextualizing them, but you're starting with something that is, is uh, is not, is not commercially uh, designated. No. It's not assigned. It's it's. Uh, does that ever bother you? It, what do you it, mean that it's not commercial? Like, would it bother you that it's not commercially assigned or? Well, I got to the point where I got tired of dream imagery, dream imagery, dream imagery. That that's all I could just all I could draw was whatever the impulse was. And when I'd sit down to really solve a problem, I'd go into self-conscious mode and have a harder time solving it. And part of it was you scat sing that much. And eventually <laughs> you come to the point where it's hard to sing lyrics and get yeah. them right because you're just so used to making making anything out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, for me personally, um, well, yeah, there, there was definitely times when it was troubling, but I think the, the more important thing was, um, or I think the important thing about that was eventually making my peace with what I was going to do with that. Was I going to let myself be eternally troubled and sort of uh, live this fight forever of like, I'm trying to force myself to be this thing that I'm not, um, which, you know, I, to quantify that, you know, uh, I, I do also enjoy designing, right? And I do like being on that, on that commercial level, you know, and, and for a lot of my career, that was the only thing that I was focused on and that I did. But um, the, yeah, there, there is a, a discomfort there and a conflict there, but, um, at a certain point, I think you just have to make your peace with what you are naturally. At least that's what I had to do. Yeah. And I, I think some people hear that or hear that or think about doing that and they imagine that that would be easier somehow, right? Like, oh, well, you're not living up to the expectations of others and you're not making it look like the industry or what other people are doing. It's like, why would that be easier? Of course, I mean, it's it's plenty hard to carve out a place for yourself and to understand yourself and to do things that have, you know, less, not precedent. I mean, almost everything in drawing especially has precedent, but it doesn't have the verve of the moment behind it. You know, it doesn't have a particular current zeitgeist cultural excitation behind it. It's It's challenging to sort of go the other way a little bit and uh and and hedge your own bets instead of going out there with everybody else so um was it uncomfortable that initial feeling absolutely but i say all of that to say once i leaned into it on the other side i found great comfort 
instead. It, it is much more comfortable, it turns out, to be yourself rather than kind of faking it and wishing you were everybody else. You know, that's the real discomfort. That's what sucks. Yeah. Well, I've heard you say, I think I've heard you say three times talking about making your peace with it. And uh, that's that's part of it. And then even with the, the, the word thing, so mm -hmm. words come to you, words come to you, words come to you. Well, I'm an image person. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a word person too. You're finding it out by being in a relaxed and receptive state and then assessing yeah. it. At least you question it, but then you question it and you say, yeah, this is good. Yeah. It, it, it was a very important process for me over the years. Yeah. And, and I look back on when I was like so closed minded and, and I was like, no, I'm not a word person. I'm an artist. I laugh at that now. I'm like, what, what did you think was going on? You know, that seems completely silly in retrospect, but you know, we go, we go through weird things on the art journey. That's for sure. Hey, anything, uh, John or, or Christian from the, uh, from the questions that relate to this, that, that would be worth carrying through with this train of thought, or um, if I look over at YouTube, will I see that there are questions? Um, I have a comment about it, um, yeah, which yeah. is, yeah. I actually think now more than ever is a good time to do exactly what you want. Uh, I've noticed just like, I don't know, with, I, I wanted to get into animation and just from doing things like Gumroad's YouTube videos, um, you know, eventually my plan is to, you know, maybe make short animated trailers or maybe short five to 10 minute films. And you can make a living doing that just by making, I don't know, educational content out of the process. So really anything that you want to make is kind of possible now. Uh, barring any sort of severe power outages of the internet <laughs> or, or anything like that you know you could make a living just doing whatever creative work you want it's what you're doing right i mean you are you are learning to animate with an audience yeah it's probably a mistake to do everything i'm learning with people watching but <laughs> i seem to keep doing it <laughs> steve martin said that that's one of the fastest ways to get good at anything is do it with an audience watching you've got this extra adrenaline pressure uh, yeah my adrenaline is pumping at the moment and I've already, done, yeah, I don't know. It's very. Uh, well, try, trying to take a little pressure off you, James. By no, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, but I do, I do think that's something that helps. Yeah, yeah. adrenaline's good. Helps you remember things. Love that might be worth. That might be worth uh, taking up at a, as a separate hour at some point is a brainstorming session of what is it you want to do, and how could you turn it into something that you hadn't thought it's like well i'm going to sell animation as animation well no i'm i'm going to sell animation as tutoring as 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 a tutorial yeah and uh, then you can for me the idea is like you it's twofold because maybe you could come up with a trailer and make a pitch for a show which is something you could eventually try to market um or you know if that doesn't work out you still have the whole process of making it that you could uh use I'm, I'm looking at what you're doing and I'm looking at the center line on the guy's back and I'm yes. relating it to his rear end. What, that, that, that's frame right there. Yeah. Is, yes. Okay. Yeah. I got it. So he's really twisted there. Yeah. I'm really trying to twist this up a yeah. lot. That's and great. then what I'm doing here is he gets into this pose. And then, so we have really big spacing between here, the swing. So the spacing here is huge. And then now he's going to settle into this pose so that center line is barely going to shift and slow down. And that sort of feels like a deceleration. Um, yeah, just really pushing that. And you try to just, you can use timing charts to sort of um, feel out what, uh, you know, what feels good. Sometimes I'll, I'll do it with the timing chart. Other times, like right now, I'm kind of just going and seeing what works. You know, what is a timing chart? What is a timing chart? Yeah. Um, so that would be like, um, let's say, uh, between B and C, I've got 10 frames. So let's just do one to 10, let's say. Now, if I wanted this to accelerate rather than, uh, actually, let me make it one to 11. Um, if I wanted it to accelerate, what I would do is rather than putting my midpoint at, say, seven, I would put my midpoint at nine. So then I'd have one, three, five, seven, and nine, all in the first half. And then from the halfway between the movement to the, the next key pose is just one frame. So mm -hmm. I'm essentially make that's called a, a slow in. So it's building up speed. 
<laughs> and this is a slow out, which is it, it built up speed or it went really fast and now it's decelerating. So the timing chart would look like. Something like that. Yeah. And you're doing this in. In what program? This is called TV paint, uh, but any program would work. It's yeah. uh, like a, a lot of people use Clip Studio. There's. Um, you could even what? do it in Photoshop, right? Yeah, you can do it in Photoshop. You can do it whichever anything that's got a timeline to it. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's so exciting to see it move. It's just all of a sudden, this still drawing comes alive. It's great. Gets me hyped. It yeah. really can have like how much quickly. like added personality those fake little uh, time things you just added give it. It makes it feel like it's an industry profession. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> there you it go. Like it's part of a production now. Uh, yeah. Wow, he's really being careful here. It's got to fit into something else. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow, these, my goodness. These little diagrams. And... <laughs> so useful. But yeah, sometimes it actually is really good to um, work with your timing chart. Uh, if I was doing this without everybody watching, I'd probably stick a little bit more close to it. Um, and if you're working with other people, you really have to be uh, on top of that. Right now, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, tattoo that to my eyelids. Right now, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. I'll be right back. I left my water bottle in the other room. But when Stephen leaves, there's nothing interesting to look at in his frame. Or maybe I shouldn't say that. Artists should not say there's nothing interesting to look at. Yeah. yeah. There's Just always something interesting. Is a very ergonomic webbed chair yeah. for, for his posture. Yeah, and it's that principle of if you create a vacuum, your creativity will rise to fill the vacuum. When he comes back, I'll imagine him as all sorts of twisted, grotesque figures. <laughs> there you go. Um, James, do you have any thoughts on somebody uh, wanting to shift their art focus? Like, like in your case, switching from concept art and design to something like animation? Yeah, um, I think... For me, I, I feel like I always had the mindset that as I was learning, you're, you're, you don't know anything until you've been doing it for at least a decade. And so I haven't been doing it for nearly that long. So I was just like, let me just try a bunch of things out, see what I like. Um, and I sort of felt really at home when I was animating. Like it just felt nice and I just had a really good time. Um, and so for me, I'm kind of just chasing that feeling of like, whatever makes me feel excited when I'm drawing or enthusiastic or that, or that feeling like, Oh, I don't want to go to bed yet. I'm going to keep staying up. Right. Um, I really want to pursue that. Insomnia um, drawing is a real problem though. It's a real problem. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying you got to develop unhealthy that. work habits. I just more mean like if you're excited about something, that's, that's your, your mind and body telling you, Hey, this is something worth looking into. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I talk to pretty much anyone who's a professional that they always say that, pursue the things that you will stay up doing, you know, you'll pull on lighters because you want, because you actually really enjoy it. Exactly. Um, as far as like going and, and doing it, uh, then I think, you know, there's, you can make the mistake of jumping too quickly into like giant things. I, I have this, or I used to do this thing of like having this, uh, maybe a project I wanted to do that was just way too massive and out of my comfort zone. So I think gradually building up those projects, um, you know, that's why with a lot of my animations, I try to keep them small and then bring them all the way to like a clean finish and sometimes even incorporate backgrounds and stuff um, because it's essentially like a microcosm of a bigger project. So um, especially someone like for me, I want to make my own studio, like a, a small independent studio. Um, you've got to be able to take that thing from the first stage to the end stage. Um, and then, yeah, people getting into animation or trying to switch get discouraged uh i think if you can get over being discouraged pretty quickly even if you make a mistake or, or i don't know it's it's at the end of the day making a mistake is not that big of a deal so well but, like, but but if i make a mistake that means i'm a bad person how could it not be a big deal <laughs> i don't understand it seems like last time we had a, a live stream that was a theme that uh, embracing mistakes and figuring things out and pouring in to solve the problem and not solving the problem and then trying again it seems like that was a, a 
regular I theme mean, of our conversation. My whole career is a mistake. So you just <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just you just go and do it and just I mean, there's not an there's not an artist alive who has avoided mistakes. Yeah, I mean, there, it, it's not ju just to spend even a moment realistically contemplating that it just reveals that it's it's an absurdity. Yeah. You know, like it, it's obvious that most of what you do is going to be at least to some extent erroneous or distant or or God, are you even how often are you even actually consciously aware of what you're comparing it to? Yeah. You know, like it's it's it's. A mistake is almost a weird idea in art. It's 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 almost like by what measure, by by whose authority is this a mistake? You know, mm -hmm. and um, inevitably you get to the the infinite regress of realizing that it's only you saying it's a mistake, and the second that you say that everything's fine, everything's fine again, and it's kind of like, you know. What about if we... people are in my face saying, "Hey, that was a big mistake." <laughs> I, but it's a, but it's I know you're kidding, but to, to overreact to things and as Cynic said, uh, read too far into things. It's like no matter how insistent they are, they are no matter how insistent they are, no matter how big the mob is, they only ever gain authority when you grant it to them. Yeah. They the only moment that they become right that that was a huge mistake is the second that you're like, yes, that was a huge mistake. And so long as you hold the line remembering that like this is a fool's errand we're just drawing here and that nothing's perfect you you are completely you're above that you're elevated from that there is no who 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 in that realm that you are creating would have the authority to say that you are wrong there right it gets more complicated when you're you know working on someone else's dollar and uh, yeah. you know you're in a pipeline or something like that but if we're talking about just baseline art creation. I think that, it, that I'd love to see evidence otherwise, you know, it, it just seems self evidently true that that's the case. Yeah, I think that that uh, one factor, though, especially in training is looking to an expert who says it's a mistake. And uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the power of the expert saying, uh, not good can be emotionally so overwhelming. But I like what somebody said about reframe mistakes as opportunities. Because they, they may be, they may be mistakes in the sense that, that that doesn't work and that that doesn't go well, but it may be that that's exactly why you know to explore in that direction and then say, okay, I've gone in that direction, I've been there and I've done that, and I've decided that's not for me. I mean, every everybody's yeah. got stories like that. You you just did. I mean, you did earlier with, uh, uh, is it a mistake to embrace this? And then, no, it isn't a mistake to embrace this, but at least I stopped and questioned it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly, I mean, yeah, we all need, yeah, just to, to um, elaborate a little further on what I said, like, we, you know, I'm a skills-based artist, you know, I love skills, you know, and, and I'm as hung up on, you know, can I reverse engineer a cone of vision from a photograph as uh, anybody you're likely to meet or something like that? Like, I, I love that stuff. You know, I, I love I, I love a lot of the con traditional constructs of what's a good value arrangement, what's a good composition, insofar as questions like that can be answered. But um, there's definitely a, a wise way to grant authority on those things, like picking a thoughtful mentor who you trust, yeah. who you know, is never going to give you a mob-ish conception of a mistake like the one that James was joking about. But this is only interesting to talk about because we do have an inclination in the current era, I think, to grant the mob-ish idea of a mistake. I know more artists who are grappling with the deep fear of the mob's reaction to their work on the internet. I know more people grappling with that than I know people grappling with how do I pick a thoughtful and careful mentor who will guide me joyfully through art. Like it's just, there's one problem that's definitely more common than the other these days. Um, and I, I think the roots of that, those fears in there definitely come from the, the not understanding that the whatever the internet would say, whatever nasty comment you would get, it's it's only real the second you make it real, right? And if it's out of context, it's you can pick whatever you want, right? If a stranger says boo about whatever you post, 
you have no obligation to care about it, even for a moment, right? And if you have a wise mentor, of which I've been lucky enough to have many, then you care about it when they say it. But it's like it should be occurring within context, I think. You know, you should pick those things with wisdom. Yeah, I, right. I wonder, uh, topic, I, I was Robert, say, does this... Uh, or, I'm sorry, you can go ahead, Marshall. If you want. I, I wanted to ask you, Robert, how this relates to, uh, to your journey. Yeah. I mean, do, I was going to say, uh, there's like a huge amount of, just to go off what Steven was saying, like, I, I always consider the biggest part about getting kind of good at art uh, to be learning to basically open and close your third eye. And when I say third eye, I'm just referring to your observation of your own thoughts, because that's what I consider like another one of your most important sensory things is your identification and observation of your own thoughts. And like that, that fear of, uh, you know, like overthinking everything, like before you do things while you're doing things, like that's the biggest thing you're trying to learn to control. You need to be able to basically open it when you need it open and shut it when you need it shut. Yeah. And when I hear him talk about like social media, internet, like that's, you're basically letting the internet and like the external world be a third eye like you're never closing it and uh that seems so dangerous and like detrimental because like it's never going to be closed if it's if you're kind of letting the internet be this third eye that you're kind of also just exposing to yourself hmm. um i've been obsessed lately with trying to do different activities just random stuff like i've been going playing golf and doing skateboarding again. Um, and the only reason I'm, I'm really obsessed with them is because they have this, this similar uh, thing that they all have, you know, golf, uh, skateboarding and art. They have this one very, very strong, similar component. And that is they all have a lot of educational buildup, whatever you want to say, there's a lot of learning. But all of them really are very good at condensing everything into a final intense moment of trying to just trust yourself. And it's so hard to get in front of a golf ball and take that, you know, you can take a thousand practice swings, but you take that one swing with the ball there with the idea that you're going to hit it. And suddenly your brain, if you can't close that third eye or squint it, you just can't get into a place where you're going to execute the thing you need to execute. Same thing with skateboarding. The second you yep. go to try like a kickflip or something that's even just a little bit has a what if danger of what if I fail? What if I mess up? What if this goes horribly wrong? Like you just can't execute anymore, no matter how good you've trained it. So it's this idea of just these things that are just all building, building, building up to the single moment of having to do a thing. And then just like finding a way to just have that eye open when you're learning, but then just close it and just trust and then do the thing, execute the thing. And that's the biggest problem with art as well, because you can teach people design theory and I can teach people all this drawing stuff, but if they can't learn to like put down lines with a trust of their intuition and just like let themselves just be like, I don't care if it's bad, it's bad, if it's good, it's good. I just need to just, just go for it. Just shut that third eye for now, draw the thing. I can open it back up and be like, okay, how do I feel about that? But if you can't say like for a moment, I don't care what happens and I don't care how I feel about it, uh, you just can't reach any level of success. And that's why I find them all kind of very interesting. And I'm, I'm struggling because it's, it's hard. It's hard to, no matter how good I can get it, like hitting a golf ball, like it'll, I, I haven't been able to get to a point where I can consistently, you know, basically have that moment of, not thinking when I swing. It's just always like, oh, well, no, uh, I'm a little, you know, it's just overthinking it every time at that moment. Um, and I can do it with art. And that's the only reason that I feel pretty good with my art skills is that I got to a point in art where I'm capable of, you know, like squinting that third eye and just being like, oh, I'm just going to go for it. Um, but I haven't been able to do that with other things. So to make myself a better teacher for art, that's why I keep trying to learn these other hobbies that really involve that same mentality and seeing if I can like find a, a hack so that will help me to teach other people yeah. how to get better at art by trying to learn, okay, how can I get better at just 
shutting that down and yeah social media and letting like other letting the world influence things that is just a way of like you know it's never shut it's almost like you got a thousand third eyes just like all inside your head at once um, it's so. self-consciousness just naturally crops up when you know you're being watched and when you're being watched by the world it can dominate your sleep yeah you what you're reminding me of about that that not not uh not getting bogged down in the thought reminds me of what Joe Weatherly talked about, about picking up a rattlesnake, that there's Shit. one secret, <laughs> which is that you don't hesitate. That if you hesitate, you will lose. If you don't hesitate, you've got a chance. <laughs> hey, when, Robert, when you do your paint explorations, those are examples then of not hesitating, right? Those are examples where you just dive in and you're willing to change it and change it and change it and go in any direction your impulse tells you. Yeah, that's an example of just basically, yeah, being okay with, you know, both not being attached to anything. That was how it started. But then I realized it was also teaching me not only to not get attached to anything, but also to just because there, you're not even expecting to be attached, that you actually don't even think about, you know, the, the potential of failure. Yeah. Uh, so maybe that's actually part of is it's the you know like if you're willing to change if you know that you're willing to change something later and like yeah. it doesn't matter you're not going to get attached to it you yeah. can almost be willing to then do it to start with without yeah. a sense of like you know oh, I'm, i don't what if it what if what if it doesn't go right what if it still looks bad what if whatever yeah. um so and maybe I'm not sure. everybody here knows what your paint explorations are uh and, and can you can you tell a little about it uh, paint exploration is basically just, uh, I would consider a little bit of like automatic drawing, but in a painterly format. So it's kind of like playing with finger paint, basically just making a lot of shapes, a lot of chaos, and then using some like cloud gazing, uh, you know, levels of just Rorschach tests to then see a couple things. It lets you see where your visual library is at, because obviously you look at this chaos and you'll kind of be like, oh, I see a bunch of faces. Or I see faces, yeah. I see people. I've been drawing so much anatomy that that's all I see in everything. Or I've been drawing creatures and all I see are creatures and everything. So I, I use it as kind of a just kind of a, a test of like, where where where's my brain at? I just want to know, because sometimes it's hard to actually know where your visual library is at, you know, until you do like something <laughs> akin to a Rorschach test, yeah. um, which is why they're kind of valuable. It's because like, no matter how much it's obsessing in your brain, sometimes you can't even realize like, yeah. oh, all I'm thinking about are faces when I look at everything or all I'm thinking about are, you know, environments or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then there's also an aspect to it that is, oh, if I wanted to render this, do I have the skills to then put the technical ability and can I make this look somewhat believable? Can I add lighting and form uh, without any sense of reference, but just based on this chaos I made and try to make it look like that thing it kind of felt like? Um, so that's that's the main thing. It's it's just kind of like automatic drawing, but in yeah. a painterly way. Yeah, put a put a link to it, somebody. Uh, Christian, if you can find a paint exploration or or even if yeah. I, I watched one last night. I love them. I love the old radio music that you've got or the old radio phenomenon you've got for the sound at the beginning. You didn't pr produce that, did you? Did you, somebody else do that? Uh, I, I do a little bit, but yeah, there's kind of like a amalgamation of a lot of combining stuff. Sometimes I, yeah, I kind of do a little bit of producing and make the music something different. But yeah, I've always, I've always loved, I don't know, you know, the static, the tuning, you know, it's very nostalgic, the you know, yeah. flipping through radios, kind of all, all that kind of aesthetic of just, uh, you know, kind of like music, you know, kind of shifting, going off and on and things like yeah. that. Yeah, me too. Love that stuff. Have you ever heard uh, Salvation at 1 a.m.? No. I don't think uh, so. You look it up on YouTube. A guy named, I think, Donald Swearingen did this half hour thing uh, where he, all he did was take 1990, 1989, 1990 uh, phrases from infomercials and stuff off of TV and wove them together into a half hour piece of music where I guarantee this will change your life. I guarantee this will change, this will change your life. And he's got them so that they become, they're chaotic, but they're rhythmic. It, that, I love that kind of stuff. And you've got some of that flavor in what you did with the paint explorations, which yeah, is part I, of why I, I like that kind of them. stuff too. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, it's good. Um, um, regarding career though, uh, because oh. part of this is this is the, the pace explorations like the golfing is a really tactile this is a thing i'm doing right now like the picking up a rattlesnake uh yeah. 
painting this particular picture with these values. On bigger, more abstract levels, like what happens over a year or five or ten, is there anything like that that relates to this this thing that Stephen brought up with with uh, making mistakes, going on that path, and then realizing that wasn't the best path, or that you can adjust as you go? Yeah, in some ways, like I, I'm kind of a, I, I like I like Stephen's art, and I kind of like where he's at with all that stuff, and I agree with him. But I, I'm kind of also jealous because I realize that like I am. In some ways, I'm not like that much of a, an artist, and like this sounds weird, but like I, I'm really just obsessed with you know, basically theory, theory, theory craft, whatever you want to say, to the point where it's almost I, I really don't actually care about making art myself or wow. doing anything. I just I love teaching more than anything, and I love the puzzles of. <laughs> just kind of understanding you know figuring figuring out a new way to like describe something or teach a concept or something like that is all i've realized i can like i've i've you know over time i realized that was why i got into art that's what i care about it was never about the making the things it was the reason i got addicted was because that i realized it was such a vast world of like puzzles to just be solved and yeah. just infinite puzzles and no one in the world I felt like really has it figured out. And, you know, luckily in the world of just just art, you know, there's at least a slight reprieve from, um, you know, like the design theory that goes on in, say, animation or music, I would say, which I would say music is infinitely more complex than art just because it involves everything about design and everything, but also time. And yeah. time is just so incredibly you know complicated and so incredibly you know dense with ideas as well that uh yeah i'm, I'm glad i'm not doing like you know in, in many ways you know i could teach animation from a certain standpoint and everything but like you know involving time with all like i'm already overwhelmed with trying to think of new ways to just describe a, a single frame just you know the design theory involved all the ratios of like what makes something likable, what makes something good, and, you know, which, you know, in my opinion, they all revolve around, you know, just creating comfort for the viewer. But when you have, like, time as well, it just, there's another thing, because you can have meta levels of comfort, which you don't really have as much when you just have a single moment in time. Like, music and animation, like, you can do things where you're basically taking uh, an illusion of one aspect of comfort in design and then shifting it over time to be a different thing, you know, whether it's like a scaring someone in a movie or whatever. But, um, you know, you might think the focal point is one thing and then the focal point might be another thing uh, that you didn't realize. And, you know, there's just so many other aspects when you start involving time with, you know, stuff or music and everything. I, I love that James is coming from a, a music background as well because i feel like he's probably got all kinds of thoughts on how uh all this you know art how how much just how much art is related to music but that was like a layup for me to say something it, insightful ask, do you think music <laughs> is kind of as as much as i do, do you think it's infinitely more complex than art just because it involves time as well i i actually don't think it's infinitely more complex um i, I don't i mean the way you phrased it seemed like it was a, a compelling argument, but I don't know. Um, I, I I feel like art can be. I, I feel like with with music. What was I going to say? I don't know. I feel like with art, you have infinite subject matter to to draw, whereas music, it's like the same twelve notes over and over again. If that makes any sense, and not not that it makes you well, can do infinite I things mean, with twelve you could, notes. You could but... say that those notes just represent you know colors. You know, just this. That's color true. Type. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I find one more complex than the other. I I do agree with your point about rhythm. Um, I have nothing insightful to say. I'm really sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, well, I, you I, know, when when you were talking about that having it happen over time, I it, there was somewhat time a little earlier than that that james was bending the bat that oh, yeah. right that one right there i was thinking that's uh that's something that can happen really quickly that you're considering it's not going to be just a noodle bat there's going to be a moment where i'm going to break the rules or bend the rules and 
yeah, the, the, the comparisons between music and art and that one is a time medium and one of them is mostly a space medium. It still takes time to look at a work of art and your, arm, your eye moves around it, but it's nothing like where the music unfolds itself and you write it according to what the composer and the performer designed. Yeah. I feel like songs are, are sort of the, the little cartoons are really small snippets of what art can do and songs and even the shortest songs like, like radio call letters where you've got three to five seconds to get your, your song in there are wonderful microcosms of all of the problems of, of composition. Yeah, I think there's, I love everything that you guys were saying. Uh, I, I could come back to a lot of points <laughs> that you said, Robert. Um, I have a lot of interesting overlaps. I just want to chat with you about things like comfort no, and things like it. that. I want to get yeah. into it. The yeah, deeper yeah. we can go down the rabbit holes, the better. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let me, so, all right. Well, first, let me, uh, I'll try to go backwards, I guess. Um, on the time thing, yeah, I there's definitely some overlaps that are kind of interesting. I mean, so a song is experienced over time where, again, you guys are animators, I'm not. A single image is experienced at a glance, right? And at, at least we feel initially, right? We feel we have understood a picture. We have had a profound relationship with it, basically immediately with most pictures. And then we tend to experience new discoveries after the initial glance as sort of an Easter egg or a secret or, oh, that wasn't necessary, right? We, we rarely feel those as, oh, that was necessary. So I think we tend to feel like images are experienced like that immediately, whereas a song by its nature must be experienced over time. You can listen to it sped up, you can jump around the song, you can go to your favorite part and things like that. But for most, most of the listens, I would think, um, you really do have to sort of go along on the ride with the song, right? And I, I'm not, they're not, I'm not convinced they're that different, actually. I, I think that we feel a lot of differences there because we're so intimately connected with the idea of time, but a glance still takes some amount of time, right? Um, it, it's just that it's almost like a song gives you more breadth to appreciate it because it works in a pers in a specific time span, right? It doesn't let you just take it in all at once. Indeed, if you speed up the song to 3x or something like that, you feel like you butchered it or that it's not right somehow, even though you're hearing all the same things. So um, I don't know. I think there's some really, I think, borderline weird um, overlaps going on there especially uh, sort of like what I, I think with what I said earlier, where um, what if Easter eggs really are part of it, right? What if they're not unnecessary or bonus? What if discoveries within the picture are integral, an inseparable part of the experience? A picture like that, I think, does have a time component, even yeah. though it's still. You have now to it, discover it. You have to find yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think... I agree. I think it, it's very hard to design that, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, everyone's going to go on a separate journey and one person might find all the Easter eggs in a minute and one person might find all the Easter eggs in a year, right? I have, I have, some, of my, I have some favorite drawings that I've looked at for, at this point, no joke, over a decade. I've looked at them over and over again for a decade. And still, after 10 years, every now and then, I'll be looking at them and I'll be like, that's there? What's that doing there? I've never <laughs> noticed that pair of scissors that's there or something like that. So when I think about that, I'm like, is this a 10 year drawing? You know, like it, it almost does become that at a certain level because my experience with it has really expanded out in a, in, in, in a mode of discovery and things like that. I don't know. I, I, I think stuff like that is, there's some weird stuff. No, I, no, I agree a hundred percent. I think there's a, uh, there's a yeah yeah like you said the weird part is there's no control over that aspect of it which yeah. makes it very interesting yeah um, because like with music you know there's you can you can throw kind of these you can make it 
basically to equivalent or to make it similar to art, let's just say, like you might think like going through a song, you're like, oh, that's that's the focal point. Like this is the structure, this is the order, that's the focal point. Much like when you look at a drawing, you're like, that's very clearly a focal point. There's a nice hierarchy. I'm very comfortable as a viewer looking at it, so I like it uh, because of the hierarchy of all these things. Uh, and you might feel like that way, kind of listening to a song. And then it might throw you a mm -hmm. curveball. And then like by the end of it, you're like, oh, okay, that wasn't the focal point. This was the focal point. Like this right. was where the thing's going. And yeah, I guess in, in music, you can kind of really control that sense of, you know, just emotion. But with art, it gets into, yeah, maybe maybe there is a, a level of, uh, you know, equal complexity uh, to just, you know, I don't know if there's a way to really make that a purposeful thing, mm -hmm. um, but but certainly there could be artwork and things that are you know much better the longer and longer and longer you kind of keep going back to it and get something different out of. I don't know how to do that purposefully, but well, <laughs> neither do I. There's there's one great exercise. I am I am teaching. I've, I've said this many times. Before, I'm teaching a, uh, an expressive drawing class at Fullerton Community. Uh, college where it's been two semesters in a row here that that uh, I've got some students that are doing such wonderful work in there. And one of the things, one of my students is synesthetic. She listens to music and she does these abstract designs and the versatility, the variety of the design she gets out of listening to different music is, is, is about as, as impressive as any I've ever seen any students do. Uh, and we, I've asked her a little bit about it, but she listens to the music. She finds that she kind of sees it and it gives her ideas for what she's doing. And it doesn't mean that these are finished pieces. Some of them are so nice that they could almost be finished pieces. They're all abstracts. Uh, but one, I, maybe I'm, I'm on the wrong point here, uh, Robert, uh, but it, it's about purpose. There are no wrong points. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, that's right. Don't worry about the mistake. Uh, it's it's that when you actually take the time to take a piece of music and see, especially an abstract piece of music with no lyrics, so that you don't illustrate Santa Claus. If it's here comes Santa Claus, you just you hear the rhythm of the way it is, and then you decide that could be these shapes that I'm echoing through. That I think that that is a a really wonderful exercise for visual composers. In the same way that uh, music composers get inspired by some things that they see, it is yeah. making it is a conscious attempt to make a comparison between the two. Yeah, uh, I, I think but, that's a good point. I did 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 uh, if, are we neglecting people's questions or you know? Where James, we are, but James. I also don't mind. I, I, I love don't. seeing I, you animate while we talk. I mean, it's like there is never a moment on the screen where the energy of what you're doing is not moving forward with what looks like unself consciousness. I, I do. I did want to make a point on that. Um, I think normally, when, you know, when I hop on one of these streams, it's uh, definitely more people than I normally get on my live streams, and a little bit more. Uh, I don't know, for some reason I have it in my head, it's a little bit more formal. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, you guys were talking about not feeling self-conscious. And then as soon as I stopped doing that, uh, then I was like, all right, let me uh, walk around a little bit. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then once I felt good and comfortable, then I just started you know, feeling a little bit more natural. So are you enjoying this? Yeah, now I'm having a good time. <laughs> I'm, uh... I was going to say, now, since we're all, all in the end, maybe you're talking about time and uh, music and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. forgot one of the, one of the next exercises, aside from, aside from uh, golf and skateboarding, one thing oh, that yeah. I've really been into is just uh, basically syncopation and polyrhythms and oh. basically trying to train my brain to keep like different beats at like, you know, the same time and trying oh. to see if I can, because that is, once again, goes back to the exact same thing. How much trust can you build in your own actions and movements? So, you know, like clapping a steady beat, you know, I'm not going to do it because that would be a lot. But like, you know, clapping a steady beat, like one, two, three, four, and then being able to do a different time or a different beat with your other. 
it's incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, people that are really advanced musicians can do that stuff. And even drummers can do it with possibly four different limbs, all doing different rhythms and stuff. But the, the mental ability to just basically, you know, shut off your, you know, kind of sense of trying to control like that one hand and just trust it to just do a thing while you're doing something else with the other is so incredibly interesting. And, yeah. you know, I just think it's such a, you know, as a, as, you know, people, it's just such an interesting thing that people can develop. And there's definitely a, you know, a similarity with art and just, you know, how much you can just get trust in certain aspects of things and then be able to put your mental energy in a different aspect. Cause if you can trust aspects of your mark making and draftsmanship, then your brain can just be in the realm of like, Oh, what would be fun? Like hierarchy wise or something like that. And, you know, you kind of need that. Like a lot of us, I think have some level of it in art just from doing art for a long time. But when you actually like kind of break it down to like, see how difficult that is, um, you know, like getting someone to be good at art is like basically in an art sense, in a visual sense, like getting them to be able to do like syncopated rhythms yeah. and doing all this stuff at the same time. So they, that's that was just I was thinking, oh, yeah, that's the that was the that's other like about exercise that I'm too. obsessed with. Um, like and, with oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. I was going to say that's what I like with skateboarding, where you kind of have to just trust yourself to do it. Otherwise, um, you know just gonna hurt yourself really bad yeah, yeah you won't get, you definitely <laughs> won't do it <laughs> and especially after a day of skateboarding if you then go and draw you're like oh this isn't anything <laughs> yeah. at least i don't break my legs when i when i draw you know? yeah there's the <laughs> advantage yeah um, i will give well one little anecdote about my syncopation polyrhythm thing yeah, yeah, yeah i think i think marshall likes little information like this um, so it's worth noting that Indian music culture, uh, from, you know, all the, all the music kind of traditions in India, mm -hmm. they are really big on this concept. And it's very interesting when you actually see like masters of it, cause they practice it basically in their singing and their rhythms, like from a young age, I have a very interesting, uh, like YouTube video kind of, that just shows an example of people doing it. And it's so interesting to see, cause they'll just like keep a rhythm like a you know like a standard four four rhythm with their hand and then like do a different rhythm with their other hand while singing hmm. these like off you know these a completely different uh you know syncopated polyrhythm and it's like the main exercise they do in like indian music traditions and it has such a you know unique quality to it that i'm like oh we're really we're missing this a lot in uh, a lot of western music traditions but when you hear it in certain places, you know, polyrhythms, like you think of bands like Tool or whatever, where it's just like, they do aspects of that and it, it stands out so much and they have, you know, such huge fan bases. And I feel like we've kind of, uh, we've missed out a little bit of embracing that as much as we could in our historical is, kind of Western. Is this history. a video? What's that? Is it, are you referring to a specific video? Uh, well, yeah, there, I have a, a video that's an example of it. I'll, I'll, it's a video you produced? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I just but, a video from you know uh, from India of them doing a syncopation exercise. Is it an example that you're left to understand that on your own, or is it where somebody? Yeah, there, there's it? no like, hey, here's how you do it. It's just oh, okay. like a demonstrate. It's basically yeah. seeing masters like just like do yeah. things, and you're just like, wow, that's I didn't even know people could do stuff like that. But for most people, it needs a teacher to point those things out. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know how you really learn. Like, I don't know if there's a method for learning that stuff. I would be, mm -hmm. I would love to, you know, talk to some Indian musician and find out what yeah. the baby steps are for, you yeah. know, kind of learning to get good at that. But well, yeah, got, I would too. You got me too excited here. So if, uh, if I could jump in. Um, yeah, please. All right. I'm just going to go nuts on a few things. So Thanks. first off, if, if learning that, so I know nothing about music. Right. But if learning that is like learning anything else that we're familiar with, even if there is a process, I think all of us here having some inclinations toward drawing and having ascended the ladder to whatever extent we have, we know even if there's a process, when you're doing it, you're not consciously doing it. Right. You you Correct. have integrated it to a level where you have basically, like you were saying, Rob, like 
you want to teach someone how to be an artist at a certain point, you're asking them to trust themselves, which is like, that's a weird philosophical regression as well. But it's, um, it's like you're asking them to abandon themselves at a certain degree, right? You're asking them to, we're getting, it's almost like we're getting caught up on the music part, the drawing part. It's like, I could say the same thing with like, well, Robert, how do you beat your heart right now? How do okay. you, right? How <laughs> do you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, how do you do it? Right. Because you're, yeah, you're having a conversation right now, but you're also running a trillion, trillion autonomous biological systems, um, effortlessly. Right. Well, you're a, you're a meditation expert or not an expert, but you're a meditation guy, right? You like meditation. Sure. So that's yeah. all about like, you know, kind of getting in touch with breathing as that one apparatus and kind of understanding how to be conscious, how to be unconscious kind of of it. And also mm -hmm little bit of your thinking stuff. So I'm yeah. sure you can probably speak more on like how that might relate. Well, the, so my, well, if you ask, a, if you ask 100 different people about meditation, you'll ask, you'll get 100 different answers, right? Um, my, oh, my, <laughs> my, my personal view is more like, um, I mean, certainly when you meditate, it feels like a lot of things are changing. And indeed, those changes can feel variably horrifying to utterly profound to life-changing whatever you can pluck whatever you want off the table but nothing's you're just sitting there right like nothing's actually happening right um so and again a lot of people would debate me there or or want to elaborate on that but um it whatever i feel about that stuff about meditation or whatever is there to be discovered it the same stuff is always happening whether you're doing the dishes whether you're making art whether you're talking with a friend like there's nothing special about being on the cushion right sitting there meditating is just a pared down simplified experience that hopefully lets you recognize what is occurring anyway while you're doing any other thing so from that viewpoint i personally have found that yeah those things it's like, yes, they're revealing themselves in drawing quite, quite obviously, but, you know, again, same thing's happening when you're drawing and uh, when you're driving or something like that. And um, yeah, it, it all dovetails basically exactly, right? Like you, you know, you have something down in drawing when you don't have to think about it anymore, right? And you're doing those, those rhythms that what is it the syncopations is that, is oh, that yeah the polyrhythm it? syncopation yeah polyrhythms it's like i remember the i think the last chapter in robert beverly hale's uh drawing lessons from the great masters is all the horses at once yeah i really remember that chapter title um it, it hit me the first time i read it i was like right it's really you're doing everything all at once and it's like it's the horses pulling the carriage. What exactly are you doing, right? Like, what are you <laughs> as the charioteer doing up there at the top? Uh, you know, another example is like, what exactly does the conductor do? Uh, you know, it's the it's the people with the instruments playing the music. Um, and w if you don't understand what a conductor does, you, you would rightfully be confused and be like, well, could they do it without him, right? And, you know, there's a long conversation uh, to happen there, but... Um, I mean, that's really it. Like for all of our grasping for skill and for understanding, the deep irony of this thing is that the, the symbol of your achievement is that you're, you let go. You're not, you, yeah. so long as you're nervously trying to control it, that's just evidence that you don't have it well in hand at a certain point. And you've got to just every, you just got to abandon as often as possible and see what happens when you let it escape. And run it's, on the, its, it's the truest quote of all time, right? That it, it it'll take you forever to learn to paint like a child. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, that, it's leave, that going leave, back, leave it to going him, back yeah. to that child <laughs> brain, and because a, a kid is the ultimate pinnacle of like just oh, I'm just gonna no thoughts, do things, make shapes, like yeah. whatever it is, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that is, it's the pinnacle of our artistry. <laughs> it's, it's like when we're right when we're born that's it will never be better artists than that first second we come out of the womb i i i hate to say it but i have to agree you know a, a lot of the time i mean I, I i mean especially once you i mean maybe as um maybe as art teachers maybe we all have descending opinions here but i mean i look at as an art teacher i i, I spend more time marveling at kids drawing sometimes than what uh 
practice students do, right? I mean, they, they really, they surprise you with the yes. decisions that they make. And there's, there's weird insights in there and the things that they decide to emphasize and to present, you know, there's a, there is a weird mystical insight in the fact that a child draws a person as just a head with limbs. I think there's really <laughs> something there. That's something really interesting. Oh, let me, I, I would, I just really quickly want to answer this question from the chat because they asked, uh, when I was talking about wanting to learn syncopation, is it, am I looking at it or for a skill I would like to have, or just a level of self-trust and mostly it's a level of self-trust, but the main reason I'm obsessed with it is because I want to see if I can, you know, I want to see by learning it myself, if I can find a way to make teaching, you know, just make myself better at teaching other people things um, mm. just by doing it. Uh, and there was also a question about what kind of meditation, um, you know, you're refer we are referring to and talking about. Um, so I guess you can answer that, Stephen. Uh... You know the difference? I don't I technically, I, I've kind of experienced, or I was looking into more of like the Sam Harris style meditation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that, Sam Harris. Yep. Uh, well, yeah. his, I believe what Sam teaches now is Vipassana, but I yeah. don't, but I, I, I think that's what he would say it is, which is traditionally construed as insight meditation. But again, you ask 50 Vipassana practitioners what that is, and you'll have a very complex discussion. Um, I, I would imagine a lot of people would debate that the kind he's teaching would be Dzogchen or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then others would just, you know, umbrella it under transcendental meditation, which is LOL, cause that's trademarked by a company now, but whatever, um, that I, that, yeah, I, I don't, is, I is mean, there one you find like, is, is there one you find the most interesting? Well, I started with Zen that that's what I got into when I was young. My, my first experiences with meditation were, um, with Zen probably when I was about 14 ish or something like that. That was the stuff that I got interested in. Um, specifically the koans back in that young age, there was again, a, a deep relationship with words and a change in mind state. It was amazing to me that there was a change in mind state available from contemplating words that ostensibly had no rational meaning. Uh, and that sort of began me on years and years of touring through a few kinds of um, meditation. What I do now, uh, I, I th and I think that this is pretty typical for people who uh, go down those roads for a long time, is that you find a personal way to do it, which I think on the surface is like, yeah, that's what you'd want. So on one day, you may be feeling more Zen-ish. On the next day, you might be feeling more, let's just focus on the breath and do some traditional um, Vipassana, just want to do access concentration, just you want to get into a jhana, like there's all sorts of terms of art and things like that for these things. But um, I, th I think, yeah, as it goes on, you, you, it's about recognizing, well, how am I feeling, right? And what would be a way to interact with this, right? Am I feeling too thoughtful? Am I feeling too dim? Am I feeling confused, disconnected, neutral, aggressive, like, and and you develop a relationship with these practices where you're like, oh, well, this one tends to address that and this one tends to address that. Um, you sort of move through them as necessary. If, if the person who's asking in the chat is looking for a recommendation, um, I'll recommend the two classic gateways, which are either Vipassana, which is insight meditation, which would be something like Sam Harris's app, like Waking Up, or Joseph Goldstein, another great um, meditation teacher. And if you find the mind stuff is distracting, you're a more embodied person, you can try Goenka style meditation. Goenka is a teacher, but uh, that's body based meditation. So that's like body scanning, which I've never used the um, oof, what's that app M mind something it's like the most popular meditation app, but I think they do uh, body scanning style more embodied meditation. So I would just recommend those two initial gateways. And if you're a weirdo, go for Zen, just prepare for chaos. The body scanning one is where you just pay, you pay attention to every aspect of your body and take the time to really focus on it. Is that yeah. what I understand? Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of 
and that rabbit hole goes extremely deep. I mean, I'm, I'm not well, uh, I've never been much of an embodied person, so I'm not very well versed in the, uh, in the body meditations, but, um, they go, I mean, it, yeah, it's as deep a rabbit hole as you could hope for. Yeah. There's a lot there. Hey, uh, can I change the subject or how, how are you guys doing? I'm doing good. How are you feeling about what you're doing, James? I'm having fun. It, it looks like it. It's, it the, the amount of energy of the camera moving in <laughs> as this guy swings the bat. And it's, it's definitely it's hard just... to, to time that correctly, right? Because he's got to get he's got to get bigger slowly at the beginning. And then as you get close, it's got to accelerate. And I kind of have it backwards a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, having it backwards could look cool. Uh, it could but be it's, it, it's just so exciting that there these rough, uh, uh, they, they, they are so unrefined in your stabs at it, but they're, the data, you're keeping the, the whole drawing anyone's ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's part of what's that it all comes together that when it moves, it's like that roughness. If you had not had that roughness, how would you have ever gotten the exciting big arc of the movement, which is what it seems you're keeping in mind that this yeah. whole swing is going to be exciting. So any individual line is irrelevant, except as it contributes to the whole swing. It's it's exactly. really exciting to see. And I, yeah, I usually, you know, just kind of go and, uh, you know, when I'm in a state like this, that's kind of the best thing. And it's actually, you know, good to try to get a draft in there, right? Like I, I looked at this and I said, okay, what can be improved here? Uh, it, it can accelerate, like the whole thing should accelerate slower and then get faster as it goes on. Yeah. So but I wouldn't have known that if I didn't just kind of go for it. So like once we're here, now it should be a little bit more quick. So I can even take out maybe that frame I'll take out. Yeah, it's looking great, by the way. Yeah, good job, yeah. man. Yeah, James, we and love you. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty good. No. <laughs> Christian or John, if, if uh, you don't mind taking the time to discern uh, questions that would be worthy of attending to whether they're in the chat now or whether they're ones that there were some questions that were posted before yeah yeah and i don't know them well enough I'm, I'm trying to keep my mind on what we're doing here so if there's anything you say let's let's put this in because it steers it robert you said something that uh last time we did a live stream last last year or whenever it was yeah it was last year uh two of you mentioned uh triangles yeah I remember as that. being the most decisive form which i had never heard that in fact you even included a little bit of that on your how to draw hands video yeah. didn't you when you were you yeah, were no, really I'm, doing I'm rough actually, hands? yeah i'm planning on doing a video that's just about triangles eventually really? like probably in a month or two uh, sometime this summer uh, I really yeah, wish I, I thought I about it more be... before i heard about it from you i think that it makes perfect sense the, it's triangles a circle is not decisive an egg is barely decisive a square or rectangle is decisive but not that decisive but a triangle you've got so many options that yeah. you've got to have you're making a choice one way or another and that really just comes back to the uh the the basis for my at least my philosophy on aesthetics which is that aesthetics are just comfort comfort for the viewer so the more you can create understanding and just be like a triangle, it's got three sides. And, you know, ideally not no equilateral triangle, even a triangle, all three sides, big, medium, small, different lengths. That is the ideal shape for just representing, you know, different form, different. Like if you can do any shadow shapes with a triangle, anything with a triangle, the more things you can do with a triangle, you should because nothing is going to create more comfort and understanding for the viewer than that 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 just a simple level of understandable shapes oh this is a shape it has this directionality it has this you know um decision in it and it's just very i think there's a good subconscious level of just comfort that it creates for a viewer there could that could be misunderstood when people hear that uh now, that's your quote aesthetics are comfort for the viewer yes yeah that, that's an interesting quote okay and then uh, the more things you can do with a triangle you should and the uh, triangles give a, an uh, aesthetic of comfort a person who is new to this conversation might be thinking gosh you know circles and egg shapes seem way more comforting to me than something that can be shaped like an arrowhead and that that aesthetic is a discomforting one but you're talking about 
you're talking about f i i think something yeah. like familiarity yeah. or or yeah okay yeah because i yeah what you're what you're referring to yeah there is a sense of like um there's an aesthetic quality to certain shapes that represent emotions like mm -hmm. in triangles represent a more discomfortable you know angular kind of things usually are not as comfortable looking especially more acute shapes you know acute angles yeah. they tend to feel threatening feel you know scary obviously blades and knives and sharp points you know versus a circle which is very just like uh you know it's very harmless so we like it we're we're okay with that um this is more so just referring to not not necessarily the shapes of like that you wanted to see in a piece or that create um but comfort on the level of just understanding things so like you can have something scary or something happy or something you know any other kind of emotion it's more so the subconscious it's it should never feel like a conscious feeling of like oh this is comfortable because that's not what it's about that that's more of a emotional feeling uh there's a subconscious level of understanding and that's the level of comfort i'm talking about it has nothing to do with like the emotional level of okay. uh, how you feel when you look at something this is just like a subconscious level of just understanding what you're looking at uh, you know, this is making me think of something that's that's a, a little bit unrelated, but it's it's been on my mind for the last couple of months. Um, do any of you know Sidney Lumet, the film the film director? He directed Network. He directed The Verdict. He directed Twelve Angry Men. He directed Dog Day Afternoon. He directed Serpico. Those are some of the more famous ones. But he no, did Network. forty-four films, and uh, he's a total New Yorker. Uh, mm -hmm. When he, when he did films outside, he was such a New Yorker that when he did films that he shot outside of New York, he did not do his best work. But these films, oh gosh, some of them that I did not even, I've, I've followed this guy's films for, for decades. And he did a film called The Hill. Mm -hmm. You can see the opening credits on, uh, on YouTube. This is 1964, 65, somewhere around there. He did one called The Pawn Broker. I do not recommend these films. They're both right around 1964, 65. Do not recommend these films <laughs> Why for not? the fact they are so <laughs> punishing. They are so unpleasant. They are so... I like that. Watching The Pawn Broker, I couldn't get anything done the next day because I was so disturbed by it. And, and if you know <laughs> that, that's enough. Or, I had like, no idea who The Pawn Broker was. I figured he was in New York. Uh, but the less you know about them, the more they can bowl you over. And this was before the rating system, too. That's another interesting phenomenon. But I don't want to get off on that. Hmm. Sidney Lumet's films tend to have an authority that when in the first few minutes you submit, because this is a world you don't know, you've never, unless you've been in a prison camp in the, in the, in the desert, in, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the 1940s. You don't know what it's like in there unless you have been uh, a person who lived in that neighborhood in New York and you came from a background of this guy. You don't know what that's like. But when the camera opens up on this world and gives you five to 10 minutes of it, even if it's extremely discomforting, that it's like hell, there is still a sense of this filmmaker knows what this world is. I don't. I will submit to the storyteller because I have no idea what's going on. And there is a comfort in that, that you've got a storyteller who knows what they're doing. And I think this is a stretch, but I think that arranging things compositionally so that the triangles are, so that the, the abstract shapes are decisive, uh, chosen because the artist says, this is the way I'm going to arrange it that it can give the viewer a sense of, okay, that's the way it's arranged, and I accept it. So there is a sense of audacity. There's a sense of, I know what I'm doing by arranging it with these shapes. Yeah, I think that's the case. It's it's showing that you made a choice. You made some decisiveness to it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think about it, you know, anytime I see art that I don't like, um, including my own, it's because... I didn't make a choice in it. You know, there was something, a, a pensiveness to it, or it was just um, maybe the silhouette isn't clear or something like that, you know? Or yeah. even like to take these rough sketches, for example, what's the difference between a rough sketch and then like a cleaned up animation? 
Mm-hmm. You see the silhouette. You have, you have the shape. You have, yeah. you know, you have the idea of what's happening. Um, yeah. Whereas this looks completely indecisive because I mean, look at the lines; they're completely indecisive. Yeah, but you're um, you're you're struggling to find the whole big thing before you get specific. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and actually, and, and, I want, oh, sorry. You, you go ahead. Um. Uh. Well, I have to pull something up, so you go ahead with what you were about to say. Before uh, I, it's I what I, what I was going to mention starts to to segue away from this, but we were, sure. we were talking about triangles and their decisiveness, and that being a new concept for me when I'm deep deeply into my sixties. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> The, the, having said that, even the, just this last Saturday in the expressive drawing class, I showed a little Da Vinci sketch and a, a, I, I think it was maybe a, a Fragonard sketch, uh, a French French artist from maybe you know two hundred or so years ago, that that they they work egg shapes and circles all over. It's like any line you let it continue to skate around there not to make it look decisive, but to make it have a sense of woven together continuity, which is uh, the, the, the danger of discovering anything new and exciting is that it can become like a law. And there is a law there, but it can become a binding law rather than I can use yeah. the balance between what triangles do and the different kinds of triangles do and what flowing skating S shapes and, and spirals and, and egg shapes can bring to hold it together. I think um, to refer to an artist that cynics doesn't like, <laughs> um, Joe Madrera is the perfect example of like taking triangles and then just doing that forever. And nothing else but his stuff's really exciting if i recall i remember his comic book covers right he did uh, yeah but there it's very decisive though like it's, yeah. uh um yeah that's that's part of it there's other things too there's his confidence with his his figures and his his uh all of the choices he makes besides but there there is something about that there is a power in those things to say this is the way i'm going to show it to you now cool. cynics go on the record telling us why you don't like joe matt <laughs> commit it to the internet forever well let's see first see if joe's here and and i don't know how There's big joe is and how strong because... his fists are but that would be a, a factor i'm sorry yeah, I didn't no, mean there's to, a weird thing because drama. i definitely uh well yeah no you were completely right with the talking about the the movies and everything because yeah it's the comfort i'm i'm looking for is not the comfort it, of like the content it's the comfort of like a basically someone that feels like they're, you know, decisive in what they're doing, you know, yeah. that's, that's mainly it. So the difference between seeing someone like do a, a very like a sketch where they keep going over the same line, because no, nah, that's not quite right. No, that's not. Like when a viewer sees that, um, at least I always try to get like my, in my opinion, I find it a lot better to just be incorrect, but confident with it than correct, but unconfident in it. Yeah. Um, so I'm like a big fan of that. But, uh, yeah, when it I don't know when it comes to Joe Mad, there is a there is a uh, like I I think he does have a good sense of that confidence. It's more just an aesthetic thing. I just I'm, yeah no I I, just, I, I, I don't I don't think he's like uh, bad for any of those reasons. I just I'm like I it's just, just not like your cup of tea. Aesthetic. Which I think is fine. I said it's just not your cup of tea, which is fine. Yeah, Everybody it's just not for the aesthetic. Yeah, type but I noticed that while while the subject of uh, of taking on Joe Madureira comes up, James switches to these pictures of a guy who's who's pre prepping his arm for oh, yeah. a, a slug that has me it, somewhat concerned. Um, it's definitely concerning. It's not entirely a slug. It's just I'm uh, it's just messy right now. But yeah, um, I couldn't help take it that way because there's OK. Let, let's, show, let's show the, the real Joe here and what he's getting. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to pull up the kind of the what I'm doing here. So um, the idea behind all this uh, was I just wanted to see how much stuff I could get done with my buddy in less than a week. Uh -huh. And so started out, I just sort of like improved, just sketched up this really, really bad story. And um, I'm not even going to tell you the story because it's just not interesting. And <laughs> I kind of just started sketching up panels and just seeing, you know, really loosely just sort of seeing what I could uh, pull together. Um, it, it's just some ninja dude that's just assassinating somebody. Really uh, compelling story stuff. Um, but then from these like just super rough panels, then uh, instead of finishing up this up as a comic, I 
I kind of got bored of that. So I decided to just start animating them. And so then I decided to, to do those finished animated frames. And so the idea was just like, see how much we can get, um, or just take those rough, loose ideas and then turn them into finished animation, see how long that took. Um, and we so got a lot done. You're experimenting with process. Yeah, because uh, the idea, like I said, we, Ryan and I want to sort of make our, our own studio and want to like turn a lot of, uh, you know, turn some of these stories that I'm not writing, thankfully, uh, into small trailers. James, I just admire your energy of, of it is a childlike energy of, let's give that a try. I can do that. Hey, let's try this. Hey, I'm running with that. <laughs> Some people refer to that as ADD. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just, well, I just do stuff. I, I don't know about ADD. I do know that uh, I had a, I, I mentioned this before public. I had a student who was diagnosed with ADHD, I think is what he said. I don't know the differences between the two, but he, he mentioned some teacher or some book called Eyes on the Horizon, which I was never able to find. But he said that that was the thing that made the biggest difference in my life. And I said, I don't even need to read it or hear the teacher. I understand what you're saying <laughs> is that some people, many people, historically, lots of boys uh, do not sit down and concentrate for long periods of time. But lots of people in general and that that is a gift to the village because they keep their eyes on the horizon. Who's coming over the horizon? What's happening? Moving from this to this, moving to this from this. And if you don't have people like that, then the, the person like me gets gets involved in something, focuses on it so much, gets obsessed with it, that there's there's nobody who's going to protect by keeping their eyes on the horizon and darting around. I, I really, really believe uh, in that. And that's why... Uh, the Kiersey temperaments, the Myers-Briggs temperaments, and some other things that, that acknowledge and honor extremely different temperaments as a spoke in the wheel that doesn't just go this way. We need a spoke in the wheel the other way. Yeah. And we've got a person who's really belligerent and argumentative, and they may be a pain to everybody. And it may be that they, you don't really don't want them around as much as you can, but you need them. And then you've got this other person who can make peace. All of those, those spectra of uh, varying strengths is something that the ADD thing makes me feel like I kind of like to be a little more. I, I definitely ADD. think it's of, you know, I, I, I think it's some of an asset in terms of, I don't know, I'm always trying to do new stuff and just explore and see where it goes. Well, it's um, exciting to see you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm having fun. Uh, Christian, we've only got about what twenty minutes left. How are we doing? You, you got a? Uh, have you got questions for us from anybody that you feel uh, like are yeah that shouldn't yeah. be ignored? Um, Wait, I mean, there are a lot of questions in the chat, but I'll I'll find. I found one that, that might be real. I, Before I we answer add, that, I can I, I just? Think I found my insight onto my Joe Mad and why I have mixed <laughs> feelings about you. <laughs> oh, right. sure. I, this I, might I, be interesting. I think. It's because a lot of his, uh, at least the finished stuff, and this goes into uh, like inked comic books as well, just a mm -hmm. similar thing. There's a level of cleanliness and control that is like placed on the finished product that in my brain almost comes off as a little bit of a lack of almost trust in the looser side of things. Hmm. And I think there's a slight aspect of that, which is why I'm always I've always been more drawn to like impressionistic stuff, hmm. stuff that feels a little bit chaotic because I feel like there's a a slight aspect of like I don't need to make every line this perfect finished thing. I yeah. can just put it out there and because I have like this good sense of trust in the viewer and trust in everything where it's just like, oh no, you'll you'll get what this is just yeah. in this slightly <laughs> rough. I think Bless you. I feel like that is mostly where that feeling comes from. Yeah. It's, it's like auto-tuned singing where you've taken out all the um, mistakes. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah and in, in working process, it's the difference between uh, Sidney Lumet and Stanley Kubrick. They were born within two years of each other. Uh, they both uh, came from New York. Uh, one difference is that Kubrick started out as a photographer. And Lumet started out as an actor. He was a child actor, in fact. He, he supported his, his family during the Depression because he was a regularly employed actor in, in stage work. And then he got into television. And when he got into television, he did something like, I don't know, 250 
TV shows in the 50s, which means you learn to think on your feet and you get good performances and it may not be polished. Kubrick did, Lumet did 44 films. Kubrick did 10 signature films. Uh, and the difference is that Kubrick micromanaged everything, even in some ways to a fault, some people think. Lumet was much looser. There's more of a sense of, of social realism in it. There's more of a sense that this isn't a movie, that you're in there. Uh, you hardly ever get that sense with Kubrick because everything is so polished. So the craft is as high as it can possibly be, almost superhuman. But there's, the, uh, there's a difference that one, be, one is much more productive than yeah. the other and does great work, but the other, because they were willing to be less productive, and I'm, I understand that he was unhappy, uh, Kubrick was unhappy with his, his, uh, his wife said that he was unhappy with his uh, limited output, but he also made such iconic uh, and, and influential stuff. True. True. But yeah, that, so that's, is that along the lines of what you're talking about, Robert, is that yeah. some I stuff mean, I, is I, so I, I certainly controlled. I apply to movies because I like Kubrick and, uh, you know, Lament. But, yeah, me too. But, uh, yeah, like someone asked if it applies to a lot of comic artists, Jim Lee, and, and, and it does. Honestly, I love the sketches. I, I don't like inked, inked yeah. work. I, I just don't like it. I just don't find, you know, inked work to be appealing. I just, I feel like it loses too, it's just too controlling yeah. over it, but. It definitely loses energy. I, I don't disagree yeah. with that at all. I've yeah. always liked uh, pencil tests better than the finished or often yeah. like pencil test better than the finished animation and now that i'm watching james do all of this stuff where it's even rougher than a pencil test <laughs> I see, yeah i can watch this for a long time steven your work is so polished uh the the form is not the technique is but you also do your sketchbook work which is looser do you have any feelings about the two as uh, as, uh, as what you get out of them yeah um well uh first let me let me say real quick because uh marshall said we only have 15 minutes left and we haven't got to questions i i can go longer than 15 minutes just for the. i record. also have to interject and be a shill and shill the class i'm doing <laughs> okay um, i have to be that guy but do you have to, to leave it. do you have to leave? no no Jake? i don't have to do it i just figured before we're we're going i should take yeah for the advantage. record i don't have to leave <laughs> okay um, hey, all right, I, well, I, can, I can stick around if, i have a little uh, bit of time I'll stick. Anyone who needs to leave uh, can leave, but if if well, if it, you guys want to take a moment to promote the things that you have going on, uh, just uh, while we have a different yeah. conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, while I can, I, rem I can well, remember what I was going to say, so I can come back to it once. Okay. We're done. While I very organically shifted to the the class I'm going to promote, um, listen. If you want to learn to do, I'm going to show all the 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 basics. You know, the, the character rotations, Heck the run cycles the 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 bouncy balls all all the good stuff other run cycles see i had all this just queued up ready to go you want to learn that stuff you head over to project city you go to papa james's class you go i don't think we have we're it's almost sold out um but you you know you click the buy now and then you get to learn from me and it'll Dude. be a good time nice you gotta uh, click the buy now. You gotta. You gotta click the buy now. I think there's one more, um, uh, one more with feedback left. Uh, it was two before we started, but I think it's one more. Um, nice. You so, gotta click that. it. You gotta. Right. You, gotta you gotta click it. Um, Marshall Andrew, do you have anything you'd like to promote? Uh, yeah, give, but give me a few minutes. Have somebody else go first because I'm going to need to uh, pull something up here. Even Zapata. Uh, I don't really have anything to promote. I've been, uh, I'm putting together a course on actually what we got into organically, uh, kind of perfectly lines with it. The course that I'm putting together is how to invent organic form. Cause, uh, as someone who is burdened by visions of that moment to moment, I have a lot of thoughts about it and how to translate it and, uh, conjure it. And, um, yeah, I've been working on that for a while. Um, it's still a bit of ways, you know, I have. I've been doing a lot of demos for it and uh, I'm doing the demos as, I'm also trying to make it double as my, this is everything I know about pencil drawing course. So that it's sort of both things at once. I'm doing all the demos in pencil. So most of them, the vast majority of the demos in pencil. So it's a lot of rendering, a lot of finishing things. So um, yeah, I'm working on that. Keep an eye out for that. I don't have anything to show for that right now. So just putting it out there that I'm doing it. 
How about you, Mr. Cynix? Uh, yeah, I got my brainstorm classes. So uh, I do. I got my brainstorm classes. There's one coming up on post-realistic painting techniques, which is just going to be a little bit of, it's like the most render heavy one. Um, but basically, I'm just kind of, I've developed a little bit of a live online class thing through brainstorm where I, I'm probably going to have four or five classes each year that just, you know, if you miss one one year, I'll probably teach it again the next year. I did a mech design one and a stylized portrait one already this year, and they were a lot of fun. Um, so I'm just going to keep those going. So they're a lot of fun. You can go to Brainstorm, check those out. Uh, flash classes, they're flash. So they're like big groups, you know, pretty, pretty quick, a lot of dense information, five weeks. Uh, they're pretty, I've, I've been having a lot of fun with them. So it's been good. Nice. Um... And Marshall, uh, are you ready? Yeah, I'm almost ready. Let me see. I've got to click oh, 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 share. Can... And if I, I click have... share oh, okay. and it shares screen and then screen two, which would be this one. Let me know if you can see my screen. Um, I cannot see your screen. But... There it goes. Oh, there it is. Now you can see my screen? Now yep. I can see your screen. Okay, let me make my pitch. The first pitch <laughs> is entering the arts as a profession which is advice for beginners where i will treat you as if you are 17 or 18 and you're thinking that you might go into the arts as a profession and if you were my kid or my my niece or nephew or or relative then i cared deeply about you and i only had an hour and a half to talk with you about it uh it's what i would tell you and i've said much more on on podcasts for free. This is only 10 bucks and it's two nights from now. So if you are interested in it, go to my website, martialart.com and you can sign up for it 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time Friday night. Uh, I've done it once before live. I'm going to do it this Friday night live. If there's no way you can make it, I intend to do it once more in June uh, at noon so that it will be not at you know, one or three in, in the morning for, for wherever you live. And then starting, actually, starting April 29th, a week and two days from now, uh, we are going to have the free pre-meeting. You don't have to pay anything to come to the pre-meeting. Again, if you go to my website, this may have been one of the biggest marketing mistakes I ever did, is that I am so crazy about this artist's work Heinrich Klei's work is some of the most amazing pin drawing I have ever seen. Uh, Stan and I did a tour through his sketchbook that if you want to, if you can find uh, the one, uh, the, the link, Christian, that yeah. says the artist inspired Disney or just type in Proko and Klei into YouTube. We've had almost half a million views on that thing. And uh, I just figured Klei is so admired by artists that if we did a, a class in Cly where we spend four sessions, and it's 10 bucks a session, so it's a total of $40 for the ones that start in May, that everybody would love it. But I, what I found out is who's Cly? Uh, oh, is that Paul Clay? The, no, no, this is Heinrich Cly. It's a different artist. And so his lack of name recognition is something that if you are wondering whether you want to be in on this, go to my website, register for the free April 29th, one hour session or half hour session or whatever it was, and I'll explain more. And then at Fullerton Community College, very important that it is F-U-L-L. -L, sorry, I don't have it up here as a uh, as a title. Let me see if I can. Uh, let me see if I can find the. There it is. Uh, well, actually, it isn't even here. They've got a Facebook page. Oh, there it is up here. Fullcall.edu. Next fall, I am teaching the staging and images classes of the Fullerton College visual storytelling uh, cycle. We're in the genre class right now where we are studying genres. And I am so excited. I've taught this class about five or six times. I am so excited about what's happening in that class. This is a junior college class. If you're in California, it's really cheap. If you're outside of California, it costs like a couple thousand dollars, which I'm sorry for. And you get some college credit. But I have students out of the state that take it 
and take these classes repeatedly. Those are the three things. And you will find out about the things that I'm doing specifically at martialart.com. You'll find the things that are going on at Fullerton College at Full Call. That's F-U-L-L-C-O-L-L dot E-D-U for the stuff I'm doing at the college. Do we not think it's a missed opportunity to call it martialarts.com? With it, you mean with a, a, a like a pun for for combat? Oh no, I never even noticed the similarity. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Sorry to bring it there. Sorry, <laughs> I'm surprised you never noticed it, Marshall. I, yeah, no, I, I noticed it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was supposed to be that's clever. Yeah. I I think it's already clever. Don't yeah. worry, it is. Well, uh, Christian, give us give us questions. Yeah, we're ready for questions. I'm, I'm going to oh, have to go pretty soon. No, I want to hear Stephen talk about his... Uh, he was going to answer his question uh, first. We uh, cut it. We kind of cut him off. And and to, to do a primer for this, he's going to talk about his... Uh, something and more about his rendering and everything. And I would like to add that for whatever reason, I will say this. I mentioned that like certain artists ink stuff feels too controlled. When I look at uh, Stephen's work, I do not get that feeling at all. I enjoy like the level of rendering in there. Yeah. And there's, I think because it feels like it's not pulling, like it just keeps adding stuff. It doesn't feel like it's taking stuff back to a like re more refined level, even though it is refined, it's kind of like giving you more kind of personality almost. So nice. go ahead, Steven. Nice. No, I mean, you kind of stole my thunder there. I mean, that's oh, really because, uh, and I feel hugely hardened that that comes across because that is what I try to focus on when I do the rendering. And that's sort of what uh, makes me enjoy it. Okay, so, so a lot of people, a lot of people think that rendering is a function that is executed over a plan and that it is you know there's a right and wrong answer this plane is turning away from that so it must be darker etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's just there's they imagine there is a secret formula to the correct rendering of this object and their pursuit of a rendered finish will be a vigil as to their failure to live up to that or something like that um that is not how i render things uh and i don't think that that's correct well Obviously, that's correct to some extent, right? A computer can render something perfectly, which is a debate we can have because uh, people still color correct those and make adjustments on those. So what does perfect mean? But um, when I, so the relationship between my sketches and my rendered work is that sketches are a raw energetic base. They are at, at when they're at their most useful, they shorthand everything that would occur in the polished finish as well. But I don't like to draw up to a render. Like I don't like to get tight before I render or anything like that, because when I start rendering, when I start shading, um, I want to be inventing new information instead of executing something by rote that is already hidden within the line drawing or something like that. So, um, if you if you have anyone out there in the chat who has troubles with rendering finds it horribly boring but feels like they want it to be a part of their process uh what i would recommend is try planning a little less sometimes right you might be in a stage where you've maybe heard too much about how to render something correctly right you you've gained some useful knowledge right but now you're sort of out in the weeds where it's like you know, I know it's this plane intersecting with this and this shape intersecting with this, and I'm supposed to be this 3D modeling program. And it's like, no, you're not. It's not going to happen. You're not going to be a 3D modeling program. So pull, stop the drawing part a little earlier. That's what I do. I like to pull back. I like to end drawing pretty early if I'm going to render something and then go into the creation of form with soft shapes and invent. It's just drawing on the inside. It's the exact same thing. It's just that we tend to, when we're not all the way out there on the contour, right, scrying lines, we tend to forget that that's all that's happening on the inside of the form as well, right? It's just planes interacting with each other and moving up, down, left, right. 
the rendering, the shading is the same thing that you're doing on the contour. You're just doing it with soft shapes. All of that to say, it can be as exciting and free and fun as sketching is. And that, that's, it feels that way for me. Uh, it doesn't get boring. It used to be boring until I sort of unlocked that part of my brain. And um, hey, if you do it right, then even, you know, you can, uh, the miracle of miracles, you can still have some freshness in a drawing that you spent 100 hours on. You know, it is possible. Yeah, no, I, it definitely comes off. So, you know, great job. Thanks, bud. Thanks, yeah, man. I see you, your technique is the thing that is so, so polished. The forms uh, remain ambiguous and there's much to be discovered in them. So there, there's a difference between loose, you can have tight technique and ambiguous form or the other mm -hmm. way around, really, really clear form and loose technique. But yeah, yeah I sure. never saw it as a fault. It's, no. just, it's sort of just making a more complex set of distinctions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it... Christian, I want to hear questions. And and people have been asking, I looked at the chat, and people have been asking about the Proco Perspective course. Uh, I'm working on it. And it, it, don't don't uh, be expecting it soon. And I know that it's a joke, that it doesn't happen. But I am working on it, and it'll be a while. And, and you're not without me teaching perspective. So don't get your undies in a bunch. You've got me teaching perspective plenty. And I even do, you know, month-long workshops uh, last year that where you actually did all the exercises and I gave feedback for it. So, so lighten up or use what you've got. Um, people are also offering you money to adopt them as, um, you know, a nephew or a child. So you could do that as well. Just yeah, offer me you know. 10 bucks and you got me for an hour and a half as your advisor. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to do questions, I'm ready for questions. Cool. Um, this is from 19 hours ago from Estelle Matt 23. Wow. I find myself passionate, passionately pursuing the freedom that drawing from imagination gives me. I'm having trouble finding ways to expand my imagination and find my own truth with art. Even with all the resources available on the internet, I find this subject hard to get concrete feedback on. I was hoping to find some guidance from, from professionals such as yourselves. Best wishes. Um, Thank you for your time. So as somebody that really struggled with that at first, Stephen was, oh wait, there we go. Stephen was the, the dude that kind of unlocked my uh, third eye as we're referring to it now. Um, I remember you said that thing uh, when we did the, the live event, you were like, yeah, I just drew, um, like the, the bathroom people, the symbol of uh, men's room or, or women's room, and you just draw those over and over again in different poses. And I just kept doing that. And um, you can kind of see that's what I'm doing here with animating. It's how I start. Um, it's just, there's nothing to it. These characters are not detailed at all. There's a little bit of form there um, in terms of, you can see the arms and legs are like cylinders and whatnot. But other than that, it's basically just a guy on the, the men's room so it's keeping uh, it simple so. and, and also complete. Yeah. And um, yeah, that really it changed the game for me. Then I just started having a ton of fun with art as opposed to feeling like art was beating me in the face. Yeah. Good. I, I, I think the, the, the usefulness of, the, of that simplicity, but it's still the complete, whatever it is, right? It doesn't have to, you know, it could be your, your shorthand of a dog, of, of environments, of whatever, is that as we go out into the weeds of finishing things and refining them and designing them, um, a, a huge maelstrom of extra considerations uh, falls upon us, right? We have to think about the way that we apply our tool, what finish we're going for, oh my God, industry concerns or things like that. Like there's all, there's this multiplying sequence of things that get added on, but at the, at the core, you're only addressing the content, like just it's a person bending or a person leaping or a dog barking or something like that before all of the rightfully captivating part of crafting, right? And mileage interacting with only the content for me is one of the most important things about potentiating your imagination. It's about becoming familiar with what do you actually find interesting and what are you actually connecting with in the stuff that you are drawing, right? There's the way that we talk about art online a lot of the times really makes it sound like there's nothing but how you craft stuff, right? Yeah. And that's just because we, 
we kind of need to leave on the table because, you know, it's just five of us talking to 500 people right now. We can't guess what everyone's into, but the content, what you actually want to make, what you care about, it is still the most important thing, right? It's just that a council of people who don't know you can't talk about that, right? So don't forget that that's still the primary thing and spend time falling in love with that stuff, right? Like you shouldn't only be uh, concerned with surface and design. Again, they're rightfully fascinating, right? We all here find them fascinating, but if you draw dogs, you should love dogs, right? If you, if you draw anatomy, you should be wild for anatomy. It should really energize you and make you so excited and you should love it on a very deep level figures, portraits. If you draw portraits, you should really care about people. I know a lot of artists really hate hearing that, but you should really be interested and deeply connected with people if you want to be a portrait painter, right? Again, we don't we don't talk about that a lot because it's hard to do that in an asynchronous shape like this and in a format like this. But if you do that, if you start onboarding that love of your content again and spending hours, mileage, right? interfacing with that, you know, thinking about dogs and how they move, dog breeds, why you love them, whatever it is. If you do that, I think your imagination will flourish on its own because the imagination usually comes from the love of the content. I hate to say it, right? It comes from the love of the content, not from the love of surface and execution. You know, that, that can get you through for a few years, you know, the, it, it's exciting on its own, but the love of the content is bottomless at a certain point and you can return to it over and over again. So I think that that's what, that's my long trail from the simplified bathroom figures, which were leaping, jumping, crying, screaming, praying to God, dying, like it, whatever, whatever they're doing, they're extremely simplified, but I, it was, it was the, the passion of the human form and it's, it's movement and it's, it's interaction with itself and with others. Uh, that is what is being shorthanded there before all of the execution stuff and that creates imagination all right that's my answer to that question i have a slightly different path to go down for imagination uh because obviously taking my uh philosophy on everything imagination creativity i feel like these words you know they carry a little bit of a myth to them a little bit of a extra gravitas of like sounding like very abstract when in reality, I would just say imagination is just how good you are at interacting with your visual library. We all have visual libraries. Uh, they're all very, you know, basically just as dense as anyone else's, but they all have different stuff in them. Um, but your visual library is what you're learning to interact with. So to be creating stuff from imagination and draw from imagination, you need to do exercises that are just revolved around pulling stuff out of your visual library. So the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to just do simple little things, make blobs, make chaos on a page, you know, to go back to like that Rorschach paint exploration type stuff. If you can just practice looking at like chaotic blobs and being like, oh, I can see something in that. That is a skill that you need to keep getting better at. Um, so make some, you know, spill some ink on a page and then look at it and just try to find something. At first, when you do it, it will be tough. You will find that you might only see the most simple, most obvious thing. It is just a skill. The more times you do it and try to pull stuff out of the clouds of chaos, um, the more the better you get at just interacting with your visual library. And it is a completely different skill set than the fundamental classic, you know, style of learning about art. So it is a different thing you need to level up and you can practice it actively. And as you get better at it, it's not that your visual library changed or anything, you know, your visual library always changed, but it's not that it, you suddenly developed one. You've always had one. You just weren't quite sure how to engage with it. And uh, you just need to level that up. You just need to keep creating nonsense, trying to look at it and find stuff. And the more you do that, eventually you'll be able to look at all the clouds in the sky on any given day or some, pile of leaves and you'll be like oh that kind of looks like a weird rabbit creature that kind of looks like some creepy monster face and you can get better at that as a skill so that's my answer yeah we make it a whole semester half a semester project in expressive drawing the first half of the semester is all abstract work 
second half of the semester is to continue with the abstract work, but look at your abstracts and see if you can find representational imagery in there. And uh, I think it's a wonderful way to go. It's, it's play until you say, hey, I think I found something in this play that really is work. It really is something that could be a, a, to pursue. It's fun. Back to uh, what Stephen said. Stephen, um, now remind me, the thing you were mentioning was, uh, oh, oh, the content. That's a big point that Walt Stanchfield makes in his Drawn to Life books, those things that he used to train the Disney animators back in the, uh, whenever it was, 60s, 70s, um, is that what the character is doing mm. is more important than your drawing. Yeah. Because you can have a great drawing of someone who is doing something that isn't worth putting in the story, putting in the uh, that isn't worth worth presenting. And of course, uh, Nicolaides said that that was at the heart of everything. That it's it's this empathy with what's going on in there that it all comes out of. It's but it, that can be tough on some people because it's abstract. Yeah. I can understand that I've got to turn it into form and know the anatomy, but what the character's doing. How do I keep the two things in mind at the same time? That's part of what I like about animating is, you know, I'll get my camera out and then set it up on a tripod and then act it out. Like this scene, I acted out um, yeah. on reference. Um, wait, let me pull it up because it's so stupid. <laughs> but it's all about what you were doing, what the character was doing in the scene. Yeah, I'm a terrible actor too. It's, uh... Oh, good. <laughs> It'll make us feel superior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just had to figure out where I saved it. I'll just say real quick while James pulls it up. I get that. I definitely get that it's hard. Like it, it's, it almost goes back to the kid thing that uh, Sanix was talking about earlier. It's, it's like the children have it, right? They, they really, yeah, they yeah. go in there. It's all the content, right? It's mom and dad. Wow, yeah. I love them, right? And it's, yeah. we, it's, it's almost like anodyne and like, oh, it's too obvious to say, but it's like, you're, you're supposed to feel that way the whole time yeah. about <laughs> art. Like we forget that we, we, we get, caught up we're like why am i not drawing like kim jong gi it's like yeah. is that what you're supposed to be paying attention to like you gotta hunt for that feeling again you know and that's craft too hunting for the yeah. love and the connection with what you're doing let's hey, see J james. james james found his uh <laughs> his... i don't even want to play it out but that's me before yeah. acting yeah let's see the beautiful yeah. acting right there i love not it. over dramatic at all intense sydney lamette would have hired you no, it was, it was glorious, James. It was glorious. <laughs> with the fisheye lens, too, which is kind of yeah. fun to play around with. It's just nice. me in my room. Yeah, it used to be that you'd have to pay a thousand or two thousand dollars for a fisheye lens, and now you've got it built right in. Lucky you. Well, I actually bought the fisheye lens. It was pretty expensive. It was five hundred dollars. So. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I didn't use well, my there phone. There you go. Um, I, I feel it's... like I think I got it before they were on everyone's phone. Yeah. So. Yeah. Unfortunately. So that was back you back in your youth. <laughs> yeah, but it helps. I, I like having, um, that, that's kind of what I like about it is you can kind of just, um, not, obviously you can see the animation ended up being different, but I got some ideas at first by acting it out and getting into the character. Christian, I'm gonna have to go soon. Anything else that we missed in the questions? Uh, there are tons of questions, but- Any, any that you deemed worthy? Oh, I have or an important any that question. Are specifically for Marshall, because or or uh, or that you've deemed worthy. Yeah. Um, I found one that is is pretty worthy. If uh, you have a minute. Yeah. Um, what is something undiscovered about art or design that you are? Oh, wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I lost it. I lost my earbud. <laughs> oh, okay. Say it again. Uh, Brent Bannister asks, "What is something undiscovered about art or design that you are personally seeking to discover?" Ah, there's a number of things. If any of you guys want to answer first. Uh, I think my, I think my answer would be too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, that's, my that's the problem. I think I don't know I'm looking for. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, <laughs> I'm just, read I'll it again say, slowly. Uh, what is something undiscovered about art slash and or design that you are personally seeking to discover? Uh, I can answer it pretty quickly because uh, I've got I got a whole bunch of things, but the only thing that's really relevant for what I'm working on right now is speeding up the trajectory of a student's progress to be a fulfilled professional. 
There have been times in history where it's happened better than other times. There have been times in history where it was just <laughs> terrible because training was so bad. Uh, whereas uh, right now, my, my thing is, how is it that if you're going to be an artist, that you do not waste waste your time reaching your potential. And I know that part of the secret is include, include wasting time in there. Wasting time is part of the process of becoming your, the, the best artist you can be. So you're not under the gun, you're not under pressure, you've got play time. But that's, that's my concern because it's my profession right now. It's how I'm making my money, is that the, the faster students get proficient and skilled and are happy with the skills they've got, uh, then it's it's breaking new ground in an area that makes a difference. That's good. That, that is a good. Uh... I, I I agree that a hundred percent that a lot of uh, what I'm looking for is, yeah, is there a way to get people faster toward where they want to be and that kind of stuff? And even is is that you know there's a big philosophical thing of like is it is speeding it up you know going to get them you know going to do it right basically or is like the stumbling a very important process of it all and it's always hard to balance that and try to figure that out and because you want you want to just give them everything they want as quickly as you can um and it's it's just a difficult concept yeah and of course it, it the individual is the one that's most responsible alexander kunkel in the beginning of those those picture this press books of heinrich Klei. These are things that when you, if you go to the free pre-meeting, I'm going to point you toward these books uh, that Picture This Press did. You've got yours in front of you. Too. Uh, uh, Alexander Kunkel mentioned in there that uh, the Clyde's training was, was would have been really, really rigorous German training of the 19th century, but rigorous as it was why weren't there 20 or 50 or 100 clies why weren't the other illustrators up to that level and the the answer really just comes down to because they weren't him he had something that people call talent he had something that people call vision he had something a, a, a temperament personality circumstances uh i'm going to talk about that for four weeks and that way, if you if you choose to, that Clyde becomes a kind of an art parent in one way for you. One thing you do when you study your your potential or tentative or committed art parents, when you say, "I want to be like this artist," or "I want to get the skill that that artist had," uh, in Clyde's case, the productivity and the freedom and the spontaneity and the out of the imagination and the just putting down ideas with such skill. It's just astonishing. If you want to get that, then you spend a month or a year extracting what you can from that artist long dead that you can deduce, induce, infer, have a teacher guide you through. That is a great way to do it. It's just to to pretend I'm going to be this person. I'm going to be. I'm. It's what children do. I'm going to be my parent. I'm going to be that that relative that is so this way. And that I I do think is emotionally as much a part of it as anything else. So I I don't know whether that answered it or not. But it sounds like a good good answer, Christian. Any others that must go? I I I've got about three more minutes, and if there's one that we can answer uh, quickly. Um, no, no, I, I don't think so. I think uh, we can use those last three minutes to uh, close up. And, and let it if, if, done. if we do another one, we'll we'll make more time for questions. This was great to see James. Yes, it's yeah, always I great always to see James. Fun talking. <laughs> and see um, animate. I I will say if we do another one, one of you has to draw. That way, I can talk. <laughs> okay. yes. Fat chance. Uh, well, we'll James, see. thank you for for being the one who who got on stage and did this. I really enjoyed it. And well, everybody, I, we would not be here if it were not for Christian, uh, who is encourages this kind of stuff, and and John Birchall, who does the technical stuff to make it happen. So they're our hosts. Thank you, John. Thank Stan you, Prokopinko is our big host who provides the forum, but Christian and John are the local hosts who see to the lights and the temperatures and, and set the tea. So thank you. Indeed. 
Um, we might do another one of these when Ahmed Aldori releases his meds map course onto proco.com. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Oh, and then we'll have to make him draw. That would be that would be yeah, that would be the that would yeah be that'll the, be nice. Yeah, we we yeah. can continue avoiding drawing, which is the the divine right of all artists to avoid <laughs> drawing as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> great seeing you guys. It's yeah. been great. Oh, Robert, it's a pleasure, Marshall. Stephen, James, Christian. Yeah, yeah it's a privilege to be here. I'm going to have to go. Okay. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye, See y'all. Bye bye. Um, I think we can end the stream. I don't know if we're still streaming. We are still streaming. Yeah, we, we are. I mean, if you yeah. want to, if you want to, you, I, I you, you should take the dumbest question. question you can find now. Yeah, find the Marshall's worst. Marshall's not around to be what's the, uh, what's the What's the best idea pencil idea? that you can? Okay, the best pencil is one that one that you've had the longest. I think is probably the best pencil. So it's got to be like this really short. Yeah, really, really short. Unusably short. I actually in second grade, I accidentally stabbed my head with a pencil, thinking I was bashing my head into the eraser side because I was so bored. Um, maybe, that, maybe, that, maybe that makes you a better artist. Well, yeah, it lodged like, right into my frontal lobe. Into your brain. And yeah. then it, it made me an addict uh, yeah. to drunk. That's how it started. If you eat a pencil, does that make you a better artist? That's throwing away in your perennial gland. Yes and yes. Um, yeah, if you eat a pencil, actually, the best way to consume it if you're going to do it is get some sort of um, knife or something just to, to grate it up into powder. And then if you can consume that. Nice. It'll be you the best. Into like a smoothie or something. Yeah. I, and, and Is I'm that how sure you're that celebrating 420, James? Yeah, that's how I'm celebrating my 420. <laughs> Fresh ground pencil. Mm -hmm. You gonna yeah. snort it or eat it? You can do that if you want. Um, I don't know if this is going to get the Proco channel um, taken off, but maybe if we give the worst advice, we'll we'll get flagged on the Proco channel, and then all these people will have to go to our channel instead. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can start talking about all the controversial topics. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's let's a great go. idea. Let's talk about abortion. We still uh, didn't. Get, oh God, what the? <laughs> I, I was going to say AI, and you had to go there. I still want to talk. I he said controversial, to... so I went controversial. A lot of people. I still have... want to talk about AI, but I've never been able I to. I think have by a AI he means abortion initiative. Most <laughs> abortion for everyone. Oh my God. Yeah, bring it, bring it on. It's oh Proko's channel. Go nuts. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, I can ask a serious question if you guys want. Yeah, sure. I'm here. I'm oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I was being um, serious. What are some non-art skills that helped you most in your career? Oh. Uh, for me, for me, it's not a thing according to Steven. So, uh, never mind. I have no answer. It's not a thing. Uh, drumming apparently. <laughs> no, I don't drum. I ha I know every it's obviously there. So everyone assumes, um, I have it there because, uh, I play with people. So then they come and play on the drums. I can play a bit, but not well. Sounds like he has a social life. I think that's got to be. Yeah, that's, that's it. Which which is the number, the proper answer. If you're, if you're actually very concerned about having a career, develop good so social skills will oh take God. you farther than your art skills where will. Oh, yeah. And just in terms of like actually getting a career in art. Yeah. Uh, you, you got people got to know you. You got to know people. People got to like you. People yeah, got to be mean, willing to, you know, offer you jobs and things. Yeah, the first time I applied for a job, uh, I just started cursing out the interviewer, and um, then they fired me. So it's, I learned a lesson there: don't insult them, don't insult their appearance. You um, got to Planned Parenthood, or yeah, <laughs> sounds like it. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah, yeah they for... rejected my application when I said um, the interviewer looked like shit. So it was it's Dude, not good. There, art is not a I, like how, I like how we've we've regressed once Marshall has left. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's no, there's yeah, as soon no as Marshall's gone, I become in. a child. You guys yeah, yeah. are just completely out of control. Yeah. I can't help it. I feel, I feel now I feel emboldened by being on the Proco channel, um, streaming out to five million people. You have a lot of skateboards back there. I do. Um, Is that a longboard? Uh, that's a snowboard. snowboard. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I took a little break from snowboard or from skateboarding because um, it was really killing my back. I think that's a consequence of getting old. And so I was, uh, I was gonna say, if you can bust a kickflip in your room right now, I will pay Pally you twenty bucks. Wait, 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 wait! If we can, would you shave your head on stream right now? No, oh, no, you, that was at the party. You're not allowed. No, that was Christian. No one wants to shave their head. Do the one time Christian thing. weird fixations. Do the kickflip. Can you do the kickflip though? Yeah. Can oh, you geez. actually do people? Oh God, this is gonna be so sweet, everyone. Oh man! Uh, First right, kickflip on the Proco channel. I am wearing. These are not the right shoes. 
All right, so that that's how he's couching it. If he can't do this it, it's the shoes. So great! Now this is the content I've been <laughs> really waiting for. Should I keep the headphones on? Yeah, you need no, to syncopate. I want, you need to do syncopated rhythms. Headphones. You need to wear headphones right, 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 and use on. a skateboard at the same Get time. Hold on. All right, I won't be able to wait. I could do no. I won't be able to hear you. Let's try it though. All right, here we have a modern day James going for a kickflip. Uh, he oh, has wow. so close. You didn't quite get take the it pop again. on that Take one. it again. Take it again. Modern day James going for his second attempt here. Oh! oh. And... <laughs> Almost nutted himself right there. <laughs> nope. Um, okay. Three, 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 that three, is uh, not. Anymore. Wow. I I almost really hurt myself on It was so one. close <laughs> though. It was so close though. <laughs> so oh, close, okay. Though. Well, I did that. Good job. I, I think that's a good uh, that's a good moment to leave. Oh and, no. Uh, uh, well, I was gonna suggest that we can see your pets. If, uh, oh, I'm not, I can't go get them right now. I can yeah, get mine. No, we're not getting our pets right now. Oh, we can't do I that. I can get mine. I'm Fanny. so hungry. Can you come? Fanny? Hold, dude. Be a good stoic. Hold on to your hunger. You'll be fine. Oh you my god, Fanny, come. I just here. tried to do a kickflip. I almost come risked here. my nether regions for the pro. Yeah, live that, stream. that board went vertical. It it did. Oh, okay. I can wait for Fanny. Hello. Here's my little. Now boy. that's a good. Boy. That's great. It's a great. <laughs> okay. It's a well, it's still a good boy. <laughs> she is girl. I guess I never asked. How do you identify? No answer. No response. Um, what a, what a took a great dog. She's the only pet? Come on. We're not going to get the kitties or anything like that? You guys aren't going to bring any? Okay, no. fine. You know what? You know what? Yeah, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I, want, I want to see if she looks at your cat on the screen. Sometimes I show her squirrels on my computer and she can, like, see them. She gets angry. I'm looking <sighs> at the, uh, the YouTube chat for the response. We are, we are in it, guys. We I'm, are I'm in anxious it. from oh, almost it. destroying my, my nuts. Look at um, it. Are, are you in pain at all? Or? No, I, I missed my, my, it went right in my knee. It was fine. Okay, okay that's good. My Christian you knee. See her? You see her? You see her? You see her? Okay. That is a very cute cat. I'm happy with that. Okay. Oh, we're just fluffy butt. She's not uh. noticing. She's like, no, that cat's not to scale. That's not a real cat. Not a real cat. <laughs> <laughs> she could tell. <laughs> He's like, that cat's at least 20 sizes too small. Yeah. Um, you, you guys know AI is going to be the death of art. Right? Yeah. Dude, we'll just do it for fun then. Who cares? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But, but it's I'm sorry. kind of good. It, it'll be good no matter what. It'll, yeah. it'll lead to new things. I just think that we need to we need to own it now that like a craft like drawing, we've got to disassociate it from incentives and markets and things like that. I think that the AI is showing us like, if that's what drawing is for, drawing's dead. It's over. Wait, but how am I gonna make money on my class if you're trying to get rid of drawing instruction? It's gonna put us in direct conflict. It's not getting rid sure. of instruction. You'll still be able to teach it will be more about, uh, you know, trying to get people to enjoy art. I feel I like the class will be more though. about I don't, that. Um, I, 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 James, I, I, you can be creative about how to exploit people. Okay. You, well, I got to exploit the youth. I need to shill sponsors and tablets and stuff, and it's going to be mm -hmm. really difficult if we have AI taking over. Um, could, I, I, I feel like that um, this is probably a good a good chance to, to cut the the stream. You see, and, he got nervous once we started yeah. talking about AI. You see, <laughs> oh, he's yeah. like, uh, <laughs> no, we got to we got to get off. Oh, no. oh geez. I'm freaking out. <laughs> All right, we understand. It got too real. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank, thank you guys you. for watching. Yeah. Right, thank you guys for joining. I am going to go get dinner now, so I appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you. Yeah, what are you getting? Team. Yeah. Wait, what you say? What are you getting? Describe um, it in yeah. detail. I think I'm going to get sushi. Oh, and right. it's going to be very exquisitely rolled up in a mm -hmm. nice rice and uh, seaweed, whatever oh. they do. A little so bit of salmon. Getting a roll for John to cut. We, we 